Welcome to the Speak Your Peace podcast. My name is Ian McNaughton, Big E here. Pleased to be joined by SYP creator Ravisher Dollywall. Rav, what's happening, big guy? What's going hey, on? Hey, man. Got my dot suit jersey on here. You know, it was the only player that, like, had any correlation to this draft for, like, with the jerseys I got. So, might uh, as well. Uh, I'm wearing my Matthew Kachuk Blasty. Uh, Blasty the Hell Horse. Uh, yeah, Wolverine. that's a fucking killer jersey like one of the best jerseys one of the best reverse retros for sure uh do you, think I, do, you think, do you think i ruined it by putting kachuk on it no 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 god no i, I don't okay. i don't like kachuk uh, like as at like, all as, a, as, a, as, a, <laughs> as another team like as a canucks man i hate that guy he's a piece of shit but th- he is such a good hockey player he's probably the top five at least uh, at the very minimum both of our drafts here um but yeah i mean i don't blame you for putting it on it was him or Johnny Hockey. You don't put Monahan, Tanev, Markstrom. Uh, no, maybe you just put Sutter. You just put Sutter, no number on yeah. the back. Oh, nice. <laughs> that that's maybe what the alternative is for Flames. Yeah, maybe. but uh, uh, 2016 NHL draft redraft. Yeah, maybe we're so we're not? this is our final redraft. Maybe I'll do another poll and ask this can be our series one. Yeah, sure. This is our uh, this is a se- this is season one of uh, NHL redrafts, and hopefully Netflix will pick this up. So we <laughs> yeah, and-, and then we just go to like nineteen twelve. We're like, so the Vancouver Millionaires they should have slept. <laughs> See you what know? what happened in nineteen seventy nine when the Habs took <laughs> Doug Doug Wickenheiser. Over, <laughs> like, what they didn't realize at the time, you know, we'll just do that for a Netflix. Who's the best undrafted players of all time? Number one, Wayne Gretzky. We're going <laughs> to we no, we'll do that situation. One time, we'll do, one, one time we will do like a redraft of the best undrafted players. Like, I'm actually we, down for that, but like maybe, I don't know if we, we well, I guess we kind of have to count Gretzky just for it. We have to. He wasn't drafted. No, we'd have to count him. So pretty much Rav and I have been, if you haven't been paying attention, Rav and I have been going through the uh, 2009 NHL draft and the 2014 NHL draft. We're redrafting them ahead of the NHL season, which begins October 12th. So we're getting some of our NHL season preview content, hashtag content in early this year. Good, good stuff from us. Yeah. Today we're going to be going through the 2016 NHL redraft featuring the likes of Austin Matthews, Patrick Line, Matthew Kachuk, Insert Pierre Luc Dubois. Insert other name here. There's a few guys. Logan Stanley. Logan Stanley was in Logan, this. Alex Nylander, Dylan Dubé, Ross Colton. Ross Colton was in this. Draft. Stanley Cup champion, Stanley Cup clinching goal. Ross Colton. Some would argue that Colton should go ahead of Matthews because he has a cup. <laughs> yeah, he has he has goals in a final. Yeah, he, he has goal, multiple goals in a series. <laughs> In a meaningful series. Anyways, my case. Uh, so in case you haven't heard any of these podcasts before, Rav and I are going to go through one to twenty, alternate picks. Um, am I do? I'm doing odd. Do I get the first overall pick again this time? Uh, do you like so first overall pick? You, 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 you maybe you want to take it. You, I think you should take it. I guess. All right, I'll take. I'll yeah, you take it because I, I got I got first last time because I took dry side because I had to get the number right. five okay. Demko. So, <laughs> so pretty much, I'm gonna go first. Rob will go second. We're alternating picks until we get to twenty, and we're gonna be redrafting the best players from the 2016 NHL draft. Um, this, I, I'll just start by saying. There's a clear top 12 in this draft. Like, there's, yeah, there think, might be a change of order there. There's definitely a change of order, probably, between you and I. Probably, but, but I think I everyone think, knows well, who is going in the top 12. I think we know, I think we know who's going in the top 12. And I want to say you and I are on a similar wavelength for who, like, wavelengths for who would be in the top three. Like, I think I, <laughs> I, I maybe, maybe <laughs> I like to, I like to think we do, but maybe we don't. So, yeah. With that being said, uh, let's get started. I'm gonna go first overall. You can you can say who was originally at this spot. Is this a question here? I think this is the the, the lock. If there if there ever was a lock, <laughs> so the Leafs take Austin Matthews again uh, <laughs> yeah. if they get the opportunity to. Listen, <laughs> Austin Matthews is a top five player in this league. I'm not gonna lie; I, he has a chance to become like. Ovechkin like like goal total like there's he if there's a guy right now I thought it would have been line eight to be honest but it, this is him it is him it's funny because 
now we're going to talk about Lion, but Lion gets the comparisons to Ovechkin. Just because they have such a similar game. And I mean, to be fair, Line a hasn't had, you know, to, he hasn't had the chance to play with someone as good as, you know, Nick Backstrom was or Eric yeah. Kuznetsov really is right now. I mean, no, I guess it, that's doing a disservice to Shifley. But Nick Backstrom, like, really fitted Ovechkin's game, like, during his, like, the whole cup run and, the, like, 10, 15 years prior to that. So with Matthews, Arguably the team's best center, I think, in franchise history. Yeah, that's, I don't know if that, uh, shout out Matt Sundin, though. That guy, I mean, not to give any slack to that guy. That guy's a legend in his own right. But, I mean, there, Matthews does a lot, right? Like, he drives the play. He can shoot really well, and that's an understatement. He's so underrated defensively. It, it, like, really he, good defensively. He could be, honestly, on a penalty kill if they really needed him. They, did, they won't put him on just because it's the Leafs. But if they ever need him, I, I think he could be serviceable. I don't think he want him there anyways. But he's not going to be bad. He's not going to be a liability, which is a good thing. He's 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 a talented player, one of the best yeah. five centers in the league. Yeah, I mean, he's good I don't know if everywhere top, offensively. I don't know top five player in the league, but I will say top five center. Uh, I put him top five player in the league right now. Okay, top like, five player in the league. The, the, no one scores 40 goals in 50 games is, is not a top five player. I'm sorry. That's a, that's my thought process there. I he he's on a similar level to like I like McKinnon honestly like McKinnon. But that's side over there on it's like McDavid just, and then those guys. I was gonna say like it's McDavid and then like the tier below it's McKinnon, Matthews, Drysital. Yo, there's a Kucherov. Ver, 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 Kucherov. Ver, Kucherov. I was Kucherov's of, in there. I, I was thinking of centers. Oh, uh, I guess I was just like those types of players because I consider McKinnon like. I mean, he's a center too, but he, he can play wing. He, he goes yeah. up the wing a lot, you know. There's, but there's just like considering like, you know, top five players overall, he is, for me, he is. All right. So Austin Matthews, and he's, he's also, he also does have a bit of personality. Yeah, like, it's, it's a good thing too. Like, especially, yeah. I think it's a thing that like, it fits well in Toronto, just like that personality. Like he's not a, he's not the, what sort of personality, like Kawhi was definitely like a, like Toronto wanted a more of a personality than Kawhi. Like if we like Scotty Barnes right now, everyone loves Scotty Barnes. Like yeah. Everyone, I'm I'm happy we took him. By the way, that's for that's for another time. But I, I'm I'm always I always like a guy who wants to be here, which is you know you never get that in Toronto, really, do you? Um, but yeah, you hundred percent Matthews there. Um, yeah, I mean his whole personality, just like I mean I guess he's friends with Justin Bieber, yeah, uh, and like they hung out with Kid Leroy and Joe Thornton. You know the the the, the typical group frederick anderson all those guys you know best friends that's all who i think kid Leroy and, and bieber hang out with are just like, <laughs> my favorite was just like yeah kid Leroy, this random australian kid who's like 17 and, and he's just hanging out with joe thornton and he, i just go on it, the guy's story and he has a selfie with joe thornton and i'm just like yo what the fuck <laughs> random met, australian. met austin's dad look it's joe <laughs> You don't tell him, you don't give him any context. That's 100% who he thinks he is. Like, there's no way. I hope he knows about the backstory of how good Joe Thornton was. Does he, no, he does he know, he know that? <laughs> does he the, kid, the, one, the kid Roy doesn't know that Joe Thornton is the only Hart Trophy winner to be traded no, in the he... same season? Like, does, does no one know? Does he not know? <laughs> number two, number two, number two. Uh, number one, Matthew. I, I, well, hold on. I just want to say about Matthews, too. The other thing that people are going to talk about with him is the playoff success or totally. lack thereof uh he's probably the out of all the people who get shit talked about the on the leafs he's probably the one who deserves a bit of a bit less just because of the situation maybe the past season but this season wasn't his fault yeah he, he had a, he was playing the whole season with a wrist injury and scored 40 goals well like, and, and i think if he i don't this might be might not be a valid excuse for him but if he played on any other team except the Leafs, I think this team would have like won a play. Like he would have won a playoff series. Yeah, if, uh, there's no did. doubt in my mind. Like if you put him on the Canucks, like they instead would, yeah, of Pedersen, probably like it would have been same better. Result. You would, yeah, He'd be scoring Game Seven against Vegas, and we go to the third round. You know, like is it is it not Besser shooting that shot and <laughs> that Leonard saved? Is it Matthews there? Uh, not to say that Besser's a has a bad shot, obviously, because he doesn't. But you know, does Matthews snipe a top cheese and he has his little NHL twenty two uh, rating upgrade and there's the stupid X factor uh, snipe shot or whatever the fuck they're adding in that game now to, to justify the eighty dollar price tag? 
<laughs> I'm still gonna buy it like next week, whenever it's out. But <laughs> you just shut up. <laughs> so who who um who do you have number two then? This is who went to? Is this Winnipeg? Yeah, this is Winnipeg. So obviously the 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 main uh the main thing going on in that year was the, who goes first, Line A or is it or is it Matthews? Uh, line A in his own right, he'll definitely go lower. He's not going second. I'll give you that. If that was a hot take, <laughs> like he's not going second. Uh, you know, 350 games, 271 points, 150 goals. Uh, this season was, he didn't deserve what happened to him this season, you know, going from Winnipeg where he's actually pretty good. <laughs> like looking in the one game he played, he scored two goals and assist. And he, I think he's where the game winner in overtime or he at least assisted on it. Um, but you know, like, <laughs> uh, yeah, he, 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 um, he is a really one dimensional player, which does, doesn't really help his case. Um, but not to say I still argue like he alongside the right talent that he he has like 50 goal potential. Like he has 40 goal, but he's like 40 goal minimum. He could get with like a good playmaker, but he's he, 50. He, goal. he can get that in his sleep. Yeah. Like 40 goals in his sleep. He could get 50. Um, He went lower for me. Uh, number two, I have a guy moving up 64 spots and it, it's uh, it's New York Rangers defenseman, Adam Fox. Whoa. Okay. That's who I have number two. Um, it, it, he was, uh, already on my radar before this season, but this season really took up a notch. Um, you know, he second, I'll just go over some of his stats among defensemen. He's second in puck possession this year. Um, 70, or he had 10.7% turnover rate, which was the best in the league. Um, I mean, he was just the best defenseman in the league. There's nothing to say about that. Um, you know, he's elite defensively, probably one of the best, like defensively too. Uh, lethal on the power play. He, him, I mean, it's hard not to when you have Panera and it's a bad ad, but like, you know, when you add Adam Fox, someone who's that good offensively to that, it, it's amazing. Um, I don't know. I, I guess from your reaction, you didn't have him going number two, but he, he, it was, uh, he had, he had it, uh, I guess he had it coming. Uh, I also, again, with my drafts, I try to, I try to get it like based off how the team was that year. Uh, Winnipeg's just been struggling with having that number one defenseman for a while. I guess that that point it was Bufflin, but I'm thinking about like Winnipeg knew he's on his like he's on the end of his thing. Yeah, get Adam Fox in, and now you got someone to replace him because Morrissey hasn't really been able to get to that you know the Bufflin level. Like he was never going to be that, but like no, that number one defenseman. Um, you know, Truba was that guy, and then he left. So there, there's he, a went few to, guys. he went to go. He went to go play in New York with Adam. Fox. That's why I wanted. <laughs> yeah, to he had a bad season in his first year too. The last year is like he had his little, what what we call the redeeming season that wasn't good, which is like what we call Tyler Myers now. Um, <laughs> he had that. <laughs> like, oh, he had a good season this year. Uh, yeah, but like he besides that, like for in his case, beside Adam Fox, it wasn't you have to what Libor Hayek? We're gonna compare him with him now. Um, but yeah, I mean, best defenseman in the league last year, second in scoring beside uh, Tyson Berry himself. There's, I don't know. For me, that one was also a no-brainer, just because I don't see any any sign of him slowing down. Like I don't. He looks like he is on a mission right now, and he, um, yeah, he's 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 a great fucking player. He's good to watch too. Like he is so good. Very, very intriguing player in the fact that he got traded twice before he even made his NHL debut. Yeah, I mean, it's it worked out for New York just because, like, you know, just the reasoning behind him going to New York was he just wanted to play in New York. Um, that also is the same thing. It wasn't the same thing with Jimmy VC, but it didn't work out with, obviously, with VC, but now it worked out with Adam Fox. And the reason I had, I'll be honest, I had Fox six. <laughs> I ha- yeah, because, I had Fox because, second because, there because he like here's my thing with Fox. I know what I think it is here. By the way, I think kind of know what's going on. Well, there's a bunch of defensemen, at, at, like that you could go with. Yeah, and Fox has had one really good year, one really yeah. good Norris year. Last year was pretty like the year before. It was a good season. Like as a defenseman, that's a really yes. good. So, like he was fourth in Calder voting. He, Arguably could have been higher, but you know, like I'm not even gonna go with that. It's kind of, I mean, it's kind of hard. He had a we go up to his Calder Memorial. Um, what, yeah, I gonna, mean, what I was gonna what I was gonna say was that. what I was gonna say with Fox is that I don't think he's a bad player. Like I think he's a really good defenseman. I don't think there's yeah. any questioning that. I think yeah. there are just other defensemen that I would rather have or that I would rather build my team around. I, I see what you mean. Which, uh, not I anything. think 
And yeah. again, not to say he's a bad player, just other guys I would rather have. Yeah. Again, that's a, a personal bias for me. I guess I did watch a lot of New York hockey this year. I think it's just the you you the way... were the, you were SYP's Rangers bandwagon yeah, Rangers band insider like right? last year. Um, uh, but no, he just watching him play. He knows the game so well. His IQ is probably the best on that team. Like, if I'm really being honest, he 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 just sees the ice better than most defensemen I've seen. He sees it better than arguably like <laughs> if not better than McCarr. There's so many offensive defensemen. He. he he, he's better. He's better than Hughes, like all these guys. Like, and yeah, in the, um, the Calder vote that year, I mean, it was kind of hard when you had McCarr Hughes. And I think Kubalik, yeah, Kubalik was third. So that's three guys who, I mean, had great seasons in the first year. But yeah, I mean, I, for me, I don't know. I, I thought, I just, in my head, I'm thinking like this guy, I don't know if he really slows down. And I have, a, I actually have his partner in crime up in, in, in this draft too. So. I guess okay. that's my little. I and mean, he, he's another guy who also see um, who can be better too. But yeah, for me, Adam Fox, you know, forty-seven points, fifty-five games. Uh, the start of the season also may have ruined that total. He could add more. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that, um, but that was me. That yeah. All right, I got third. I'm going third, third overall. Here. Um, I guess I can let me pull up who we got here. So no, third, Columbus Blue Jackets select Pierre Luc Dubois. Which at the time was a bit of a reach because people thought that Pujarvi yeah. was going to go. And, yeah. And I had the it, Canucks taking him. I thought the Canucks would have got him because it looked like on the board when you're, you know, and you you see it. I'm at the, you know, I think we're at the, I think I'm at the McDonald's watching this after an exam. And, and I, and I see it. Oh my gosh. It was, I was just so, that was a rough day. Like for me, just when I saw the fifth pick and, you know, we're gonna, we'll talk about that when you get there. But uh, I mean, he, he's, he was pretty good on Columbus. Like I'm not going to say like he, I mean, arguably, I mean, it obviously didn't work out, but I mean, he wasn't bad until like really the last two seasons, last season for sure. It was a really smart pick by a really smart team. Yeah. And Columbus has a few drafts where they make some really smart picks. I think Columbus at three in 2016, they go with Matthew Kachuk. Yeah, Matthew Kachuk. Uh, <laughs> go with it. Now, it might be a bit of a reach for some. <clears throat> But I do think he provides that sandpaper, you know, offensive forechecking, hard nose play that at the time Torts would like, uh, that I think Columbus likes to play. It's not the, the thing is that it's Columbus is not an individual team. How do I like it's not a place where individuals it's a team. Thrive. It's it's not really like you know you can't just put Matthews there. Like yeah. maybe Matt. I guess Matthews might be out of the questions because I feel like he would be good anywhere. But if you, I don't know, say a guy like maybe Marner or like a Nylander, like for I guess a Leafs the comparison. I don't know if a player like Nylander will go in there and get you know forty points in fifty games, whatever like he did this season. I he you know you don't know. There's the you. It's a really team paced like team like. Well, like, I was gonna no, say, one's, no one's like in a full season. No one's getting over 65, 70 points. Obviously, you know, Panarin and, and it was a, like, that's another guy. He, he like, he's put him anywhere. He's going to get a point per game, but that's like, that's like, I guess, arguably like how the Islanders are right now where Barzal gets a point a game, but just because he's on another level. But besides that, it's a team. Well, it's kind of like how they talk about with the San Antonio Spurs, right? Like, yeah, it's a team. You're not allowed to thrive in the Spurs system because it's such yeah. a team oriented system. Yeah. I feel like that's the same way with the Blue Jackets. And I feel like Matthew Kachuk would really thrive in Columbus. Uh, he would play extremely well there. He might be useful. I mean, they did, they, they do sweep uh, Tampa Bay in 2019 with um, Dubois on the team. Yeah, but again, I, you got Duchesne. You still have Panarin and like Bobrovsky. You, so there's a lot of guys there. You throw Kachuk on a top line with Duchesne and Panarin, and I think it's <laughs> yeah. it's still a really good line. I, arguably better. Like arguably. I, I don't know who was on that. Maybe Atkinson, who also, I mean, in his own right, guy got 40 goals like the season that season or the season prior. Yeah. So I mean, it's not like he's no slouch either. Um, but yeah, there's, that's a good pick. I, I didn't have him there. I have just a bit lower, but I mean, I actually, if honestly, if Adam Fox didn't have that season, he probably would have been number two for me or number, well, number two or number three. Probably. And, and I mean, again, I like a check. I'm wearing his Jersey. So again, I'm yeah. probably going to be biased, but I just think he's also a guy 
maybe if he didn't for, play for Columbus, but he just seems like a guy who would have better playoff success. Yeah. Uh, he, he seems like someone who would thrive in the playoffs if he didn't play for such a crap yeah. team sometimes. Yeah, um, for sure. Matthew, um, but yeah, he's Matthew, a good player. Good player, Matthew Kachuk. That's my third pick. Rav, who do you have going for? Fourth. So let me pull up the draft here. So number four overall uh, was Jesse Puglia Yarvi. Uh, obviously, that one wasn't, he never ended up being the top five draft pick player that we, everyone wanted. Um, but I mean, again, it was just the thing with Edmonton. They don't tend to give these guys like a correct chance. That's what I, you know, you can't play a guy. I mean, I don't, I also don't think he should have uh, came straight in. Like, I mean, he didn't really come straight. I mean, he, st- he did. I think he played like 30 games right off the bat, went back, came in next season, played a season. And that didn't work out. If he had played two more years in Sweden, uh, that may have helped him, but it didn't work out. But thankfully now he came back and he looked pretty good last season on both ends of the ice. He was definitely more of a second line player. Maybe you could put him on the power play. He didn't really look too good on the power play, to be honest with you, but. I'll get to Puli Arv because I do have him later in the draft. I, unless... I I also have him in top twenty. Yeah, so we can get we can get there. I'll talk about him later, but yeah, he didn't end up being the player um, everyone wanted him to be. Um, so number three, I had another guy, and usually uh, what I do is move that guy to fourth. I'm yeah. not because number four, I think Edmonton really need the, needed a defenseman. <laughs> so <laughs> I have another defenseman going number four. Where is he? He's moving up. Uh, he's moving up ten spots in this draft. It's Charlie McAvoy. Good pick. That's who I have, number three, uh, from Boston University. He plays for Boston right now from Long Beach, New York. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what they're – he is right now probably – honestly, he's the most underrated defenseman for me right now. Like, he is probably a top five defenseman, if we're really being honest. Like, on both ends of the ice, he was – I mean, maybe his power play stats. Really, like, I looked at his power play, uh, like, his numbers. It didn't look too good. Besides that, I mean, this like – he is a one of the best penalty killers in the league, if not the best, uh, as a defenseman. He, he, I mean, he's not a slouch offensively either. Either he's thirty points in fifty games this season, plus twenty two. I mean, any, I mean, he's their number one defenseman right now, and he's he's burdening a lo- big load, twenty four minutes a game. And I'm not really a fan of many of the defensemen Boston has right now, besides Grizzly and him. I mean, that bo- the the top four or the second and third pairing really is a big drop off from Grizzly and, and, and McAvoy for me right now. But again, Edmonton has always had a, def, uh, a deficiency in the, in the defense department. Is that, I guess that's my little wordplay going on there. Um, Yeah. I mean, they, they just can't find good defensemen. Like only recently have they had any success with the, with this, uh, the nurse and I guess Barry offensively too, but you know, Duncan Keith and like, there's a lot, you know, obviously we can talk about the Griffin Reinhardt, Barzal do that if you want to go further back, but I think it's only a few years back, but yeah. I, back I, I had McAvoy going fourth overall. He was my top yeah. defenseman. Yeah. And he would probably be the best defenseman the Oilers had yeah. had since he, Pronger. I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> like this like Chris Pronger is one of the best hockey players to ever play hockey <laughs> and like I, and I mean like look how what he did the one season in here he brought him to the finals and like I mean the few games if I forgot what it was I forgot I think it did go to seven yeah it went to seven it, in yeah it went to seven in Carolina you know he's he's a game away from winning the Stanley Cup and that's what yeah, I think Mac, that's, that's what that's what I think McAvoy could have been in Edmonton and yeah. and I I I really like Charlie McAvoy um He's a, again. He's like he's like a smaller defensive version, not a smaller like in the terms of like size. Obviously, he's. I mean, he's not he's not a slouch himself, but like a uh, a lesser Matthew Kachuk pest. Like he's not lesser of a Marsh. He's still a pest, but he's not like Marsh and Kachuk level. But he he'll he'll get in your head. Good. He, he he will definitely be the annoying to play player. against. He fits what the Bruins are doing so well, which is, I think, partially why he is successful. Yeah. He just and that's fits. why their team's defense still doesn't look as bad as it does, just because he is such a rock, really. Yep. And I think he would have been a, 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 a fantastic pick to, by the Oilers. And I'm sure he wouldn't be at, you know, he wouldn't have the same level of success compared to, you know, being in Boston his whole career. Yeah. But McAvoy is a top five player in this redraft for me. He's the top defenseman in this draft. Yeah, and and for me, honestly, again, is if Fox didn't have this season, 
Fox would have been in my top, like probably before this season, probably would have been in my top 10 just because I was already, already so high on him. But then this season really shot me up, and I just think he would have fit in Winnipeg. But Edmonton just needs a defenseman who, who's actually like, like, I don't know if Fox would fit, but McAvoy is just such a hard nosed guy. Like, he, he is, he's not all defense, but he's a, I mean, he's probably better. He's than a very, he's a, he's a balance of both. I don't, I, don't a, know. I mean, so is Fox on a, on a different level. Whereas, yeah. like, but I also think McAvoy is just better defensively overall. He's more of a, he's more of someone you want to help you with defense. Whereas McAvoy or Fox is a, I mean, still a top defenseman defensively, but McAvoy fits that Edmonton scheme better. I guess not right now with, with the, you know, the nurse Barry shit going on, but <laughs> what should have been, what, what it should have been. I mean, nurse, nurse McAvoy might be the most lethal one. I mean, I don't know if Edmonton uses him properly if they take yeah. him, Again, but Edmonton doesn't use any of their picks properly. <laughs> No, so with that being said, um, I I still think as a player he's yeah the best defenseman. And top yeah, five player. it shows how good he is on Boston. Yeah. Um. Again, speak of I guess I brought up Barzell. I, I mean Shabbat and and McAvoy would have been a nice pairing, wouldn't it too? <laughs> that wouldn't have been bad. Uh, <laughs> I get the I have the fifth pick. Okay, and the fifth and, and overall pick in that draft was the Vancouver Canucks, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Uh, we drafted Oliu Levy, uh, fifth Helsinki, Finland. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just remember when it happened, and I was just distraught. Like, I actually haven't like even for ten when he got picked, it was a stretch. But I'm like, oh, this guy can be good. And I mean, like for that one season, he got thirty six points, I guess. But you know, Pasternak was there, but whatever. I mean, I don't get it. I, I still don't get the pick. He had a good season in the in the OHL. But I mean, okay, I, the, I don't, I don't know what it was. I, I never saw anything in him, and it, it didn't translate to NHL. He, he's been looking better recently. Unfortunately, he did get uh, COVID, and it's I definitely as he saw in the, in the skates where he was laying on the ground in the corner. Um, he, he was, uh, he's still feeling the after effects of it. But I, I, I know this yeah. was meant to the meant as a joke, but I did see somebody say like R.I.P. Ole Olevi. He died. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I dude. saw it the first time. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of the veterans, I think Miller gave him shit for it, which is fair. But I mean, to be fair to the guy, that's nothing. Uh, it's not a t- small thing to deal with. Um, but yeah, and I at the time, I when I was 16, not even like into like. I, that was when I was getting back in hockey because I took a break after that. Uh, the Calgary abuse from Michael Furland, honestly, like I took a <laughs> two-year break from, from hockey there. And you know, I was looking at the drafts. I'm like, oh, this look it looks good. We'll get Dubois, which I would have been. I mean, now would have been that <laughs> he probably would have been our third line center, or and, but I don't know. Maybe the future doesn't. You know, we don't get Pedersen down the line if we're better. But you know that. Yeah, it wasn't a good draft pick. Obviously, I mean, we probably again if we got a good pick there, we we might not get Patterson. But I don't know. Ulevi didn't work. But who do you have for number five? Do you have Ulevi? No, you don't have Ulevi. Um, yeah. Ulevi, I don't even have him in my. Yes, me neither. I, I I hope you wouldn't. <laughs> um, I I have Patrick Laine going fifth to the. So oh, that's that might be the hot take. Right? That might be the hot one there. So I actually had Laine going third in this draft. Oh really? I did. I said, I see why. I can't even blame. I see why. Because I just think Line A is one of the best goal scorers in the league. Yeah. You just get him on the power play, and he'll just get goals. He'll score points. Um, yeah. Defensively, you, you desire, a little bit more to be desired defensively. Uh, yeah. He's not really a playmaker. Um, he's already been traded. He's got a Fortnite problem. <laughs> yeah. I remember pulling up his stats in 20, 2016. I literally went to his Fortnite tracker and pulled up his legit stats. I'm like, yo, this guy's kind of good too. Like he was really good. Like I'm like, dude, just be, you know how good you are at hockey. You don't need to play this shit and be good, good at this. You are a really good hockey player, man. You don't need to have a 4KD in Fortnite. So I just think line A is a, it's, I would here's the thing. I would want Liney on my team if I got the opportunity to. I yeah. just think it's really unfortunate that he goes from Winnipeg, which is not really an <laughs> offensive destination, yeah. now to Columbus, which is even more desolate for offensive players like him. And 
I mean, I, yeah, or in Columbus, yeah. Winnipeg, I, again, like, I guess I see what you mean just because, like, yeah. You know, maybe, I, maybe, I don't know if the, maybe in this example, he goes to Vancouver, he plays with Horvat, he plays with, I don't know. Miller, I guess they trade for Miller still eventually. Yeah. They, he plays with Besser. He plays with Besser and he plays with Horvat. And that's like one of the best lines in hockey. But yeah. instead he played for Winnipeg and he, you know, he, he pro- I don't know if he ever got along with Shifley, um, Blake Wheeler. I don't know if those guys ever really like. Yeah, they- apparently there was something going on and then they all came out. Like Wheeler said, like, we don't even have an issue with this guy. I don't know what that's talking about. So I don't know. That there was a lot of things going on there, but yeah, I, I see where you're coming from there. So I, I listen, I like the player. I think he's really good. I had him third in the redraft because I think if you use him properly, same with yeah. McAvoy. McAvoy and Line a are really good examples of like if you use the player to his strength, he yeah. will do well. Uh yeah. if you don't, it it, it, it kind of it is what it is. Yeah. And Line a at least has been to a conference finals. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll give him that. He's been to a conference finals. Um, I guess, I mean, you, yeah. You got the sixth pick if you want to go next. So, so actually, fifth, I had Chuck going to the Canucks. Like, if, oh, if, yes. I, I did have Canucks. I mean, it worked out great because I, I wouldn't mind them on the team, you know, especially right now. Apparently, yeah. there was rumors about, like, you know, because Brady's training with Hughes and Pedersen there. Apparently, so, some of this is, like, this Canucks guy on Twitter, like, everyone takes seriously. And because he he does actually have an insight, but I don't know about this Did one. It, was, like, it, was it Drantz? No, it's it's like this. I forgot his name. Mister Booth. <laughs> no, even like no, it's a guy who's like much more credible than that. <laughs> but, but yeah, they're like apparently you know. I mean, he has insiders, but it's just like a non-verified guy. But what are the what are the odds that Mister Booth, uh, before the season, like changes his profile to Travis Kane? <sighs> And oh, like, he's gonna no, ha- he's gonna ha- do the <laughs> happy happy to welcome Ole Yolevi on the team as a <laughs> as a starting defenseman. No, no, he's no, he's gonna change it to he's actually gonna change it to Aquilini, and then like happy to no, but it won't be that. It'll be like it'll be like ha- him with an A or something. Like it'll be even like something like that where it's like you know what, and like he'll make it photoshopped really well. Oh, my favorite is when he gets like you know he got I think he got a. Uh, Oh, I got Don Dom should you know, fucking should say, I can't pronounce his last. You got him Dom, good. Dom decision. One. Yeah, you got him good. You got one more guy. I think you got Friedman he, good. <laughs> you got Friedman, I think too. Well, he was Friedman. Booth was. Yeah, Freeman. that's what he was. Yeah, Booth was Friedman. I want to see if I can pull that up. We're getting side. That, that was the one. That was literally the one. I think. Oh my gosh. Uh, you've been. I want to pull that up now. If you guys don't understand, there's this guy on Twitter. Canucks guy, and he, he'll always just randomly change his profile and his name to like an actual insider and just say some actually wild stuff, but it looks like somewhat real. So, like, big hockey writers and all these like hockey guys will be like, Oh, I can't believe that. And then after like two minutes, they realize, you know, you've been boothed. Yeah, is it, was it this one where it's like, not sure what to expect for a timeline of announcements from the Canucks, but word tonight is Jim Benning was given indication in the last oh. four hours that he is to return or something like that. Mm, or, I think no, it's to that's not that's not it. I think it was to quit or if not, but I guess to move on. Um uh yeah, who do you who do you have going sixth? <laughs> sixth overall. Give me one sec here. Sorry, kind of kind of trailed off there for a I'm second. Gonna, I, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my research <laughs> and see if I can find anything. <laughs> so sixth overall, obviously Matthew Kachuk. Uh we talked about him to the Calgary Flames. Great worked out for them. Um so yeah, obviously I, you did a with the. I mean, you had line of going much higher. Um, let me go to my draft here. Yeah, you had line of going much higher. Uh, right here, I have Jacob Ch- Chikrin. I can't pronounce his name still. Jacob Ch- Chikrin. Chikrin. I always see Chichurin. I'm like, dude, that's definitely not how it's pronounced. But it might be. I don't know. Is that uh, is Jacob that- Chikrin? Is that also uh, why you can't uh, say Dom Lucision's name? Yeah, I don't think I'm saying it right, but <laughs> I, I I can pronounce it right. It's just the fact that I don't want to mess it up, <laughs> but I'll still mess it up anyways. Um, but yeah, that's who I had going here, and I think I might keep him just because I I had um I had someone else going number three. Who I think it's kind of obvious at this point, but yeah, he's uh I'm gonna go with Jacob Chick- Chikrin. 
fuck me. <laughs> Damn. Uh, at, at, uh, at number six overall. Um, broke out this season. I think he led defenseman in goal scoring, didn't he? From what I recall. Um, but yeah, considering, uh, you know, in, considering the team he's playing on right now and to get 41 points is nothing short of remarkable. Honestly, like on that team, it, it is, that's Herculean dude. That shit <laughs> to do that is amazing. Um, but yeah, he, uh, he took the role, the number one defenseman role from Ekman Larson. He's ran with him, man. He's been great. Um, I don't know what to say. He's uh, definitely more on the offensive side. You, you don't really, I mean, he's obviously a number one, like he's a number one pairing defenseman. Um, but obviously you don't maybe look to him as a defenseman as a defend, like as a good, like defensive player, but he's, he plays tough number one minutes, man. And, and he's so good offensively. Um, he, I don't know. He, he, I think he's a, he's pretty good at actually drawing penalties, what I've also seen, but I mean, he's just been a, I mean, he's just been a good player all this season. And I, for me, again, it was a thing where Calgary is at a point here. So this is the year that Hamilton Lee or Hamilton gets traded and they get Fox and then, you know, <laughs> that never worked out because he didn't want to play. You want to play for New York. Um, but yeah, so I guess they, at the end of this year, they, they, I guess they're already my thought process at the end of next year, they're kind of, they want to lose Fox or they want to lose Hamilton, you know, Giordano, how many years does he have left? I mean, obviously worked out for the next few years, two years after that, after the 2016, 17 season. So, you know, next guy up, you got a number one defenseman in Jacob Chick, uh, Chick, Chickren. Damn. Jacob Chikrin. Um, Hannafin, I guess, was meant to be that guy. And and obviously it might be a slower process. I don't I, I mean it's still a chance he becomes like he can take the role from Giordano. I don't know if he does, but Jacob Chikrin has proven he can and on a worse team. So I that's that's where I'm gonna go for number six. I feel like when we done when when we've done these redrafts, we just pick like better defensemen for Calgary. Like I feel like, <laughs> yeah. like, like again, like, I did the same thing for Edmonton too. Yeah, like, we, I, I, I told you straight up, like there's fucking Debrinket, <laughs> and yeah. I go with McAvoy. And the, Debrink, imagine the, like someone as lethal goal scoring as Liney or Debrinket, and we put and we give him McAvoy because like imagine McDavid, Drysaddle, Debrinket, and we're giving him McAvoy, right? Like that's uh that's how you know they need defense these Alberta teams. All right. Considering, which is weird because obviously Calgary is a team that's like, you know, defensive, Sutter, you know. Uh, what I did find, by the way, uh, remember Mr. Booth and Tony D'Angelo? Was, oh, like, yeah. When it was, when it, was yeah. it wasn't D'Angelo, but it was a burner. The bur- yeah, the, the burner. <laughs> um, but yeah. So pretty much it's just like, yeah, Mr. Booth, like, DMing NYR, you know, Rangers. Oh, yeah, 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 I saw that. <laughs> That's that one. I think might be the best one. It's like uh, rumors are like you're you're getting traded sooner. Like, within the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I heard the Wait. Vancouver Canucks are making an offer for Tony in the next 24 hours. And NR fans, like, <laughs> where did you hear that from? And and Mr. Booth says, between you and me, I'm buddies with John Widesbroad, Canucks assistant general manager. He said you should be ready for a big call soon. Wow. Says NR NYR fan, what is Van's offer? I'll double check for you, but I heard it's a draft pick going back to NY with some salary retained. <laughs> no, no, I can't believe. I also, that's probably not him. Like, if there's a real. It's probably it's no. I don't think. Him. I don't think that's it's definitely was. not him. I, I think there's a point in my head where I actually did think it could have been him. But then my also then my like my conscience kind of kicked in and like yo what, what this guy's about to like get kicked out of the league yet he's on Twitter yelling at people still. It's more it's more like I want it to happen for the actual meme to happen than I think yeah. it is actually. Happening. But it's definitely not like it's just for real to be honest. All um, right, so so number yeah number six Jacob Jacob Chikrin, uh, the team he plays for now is up next the the Coyotes who have uh, actually changed their logo. Yeah, they're back the to Kachinas. Back. Which is which is great. I mean, that's a good. Uh, that's a good. It's an amazing logo, in my opinion. I don't know why that honestly ever yeah. was changed. To be honest, I really liked it. I know they want to guess get a rebrand going just because they're probably in the Atlanta Thrashers just, phase, which they're still in now. Well, no, it was just just to you know to try and sell season tickets that they didn't sell. Yeah, <laughs> essentially. Um, pretty much. Scott and I were talking about doing our uh, when we were doing our NHL Central Division preview. And yeah. I said, like, the one redeeming quality the Coyotes have is that they brought Kachinas back full-time. <laughs> one redeeming quality of this team. 
Yeah. Um. So so number seven, uh, they I, originally took Clayton Keller. That's who they I, originally took. And I uh I get to make the the pick here. Yeah. For the Coyotes. <laughs> Take Clayton Keller. I'm not taking Clayton. Okay, uh, <laughs> I, I was I, like, please don't. I was, I'm gonna take Alex to bring cash. Good. Uh, he, I actually had going to Columbus number three. Uh, that's who I had. See, the bring it like I, I have him going to seventh because I would rather have the defenseman of like McAvoy, Chickren, and Fox more than to bring it, and I would rather have Matthews, Kachuk, and Line. Hmm. I think I would rather take all of those. Like I think all of those guys' ceiling is higher. Than yeah, I I know I know what you mean by ceiling. It, for me to break it, number three was dude. The guy can has proven he can score. Where line eight, like always, needs to be in a position where he has to. He literally has to be in the Vatican spot to score. He can score from the defense. He can score from the blue line too if you need him to. But the brink, it's like the brink. It can score from anywhere. That guy, I don't know. That's why he is number three for me, man. And this season showed, like, again, he, he's still a 40-goal, 40 40 40-assist guy. Like, he is so good. I know he plays alongside Patrick Kane, but honestly, like, he low-key looked like he was facilitating more than Patrick Kane was at his points. Like, he he is such a dynamic player. And, I, I mean, I, he, would, he would definitely help Arizona right now. Yeah, absolutely. He, he again, he's about, like, he can score, he can shoot, he can pass. It's like the almost like the five tool athlete, you know, you talk yeah. about with baseball. He's got speed. Don't compare him to Tayson Hill. He's not the Swiss Army. <laughs> He's not that, but like <laughs> he, he is like the guy who can do a lot of good things. Yeah. Like he can do a lot to help a team, you know, perform well. Uh I'm I'm sure he's gonna get I don't know if he's gonna get a lot of top line minutes this year with chicago because chicago's kind of a weird team how they have their roster build but i mean i mean there's I, in my mind there's no way he doesn't just because he i don't see how you can have a guy who was on pace for 40 goals again this year at 40 goals a year two years prior i mean he did have an off year in 2020 but i mean he came back this season and looked better than i mean he looked better than ever is his highest yeah. point pace he's ever had um I just see, I don't see a, a world where he's not playing first line minutes. I mean, and he's on a good, see with Jacob Chikrin, I didn't get to that. He's on one of the league's best contracts. Right now, Chikrin's on a good contract. He's only getting 6.4 for the next two years. I think Chikrin's like five for the next like five or six. So yeah. that's even better. But, you know, that's, you know, and they're wanting to win now. I I think you just go in with like him, him like he's on the first line with Kane. And then what do you put Taze back on the first line again? I'm assuming that's what you're doing is you're putting Taze and Kane on the first line, probably with the burn cat. And yeah. you're just, you know, you're kind of running it back from last year in a way. Yeah, and that's what they're trying to do. They're just trying to run it back for like how long, you know. I mean, I guess when you have like you know, these legends like hockey legendary hockey players like Taves and Kane, it might you might as well run it back. And, and that's you, why they went in with Jones and all that. Well, and you got Flurry too. Like Flurry's yeah. not trying to, you know, take part in a rebuild. So yeah, so I guess they so are I, probably going to go in, and without that, Debrinket's got to probably be on the first line for me. Debrinket yeah, seventh. He went. He goes to Arizona in the redraft. You're up next with eighth. Eighth overall. Oh my gosh, just closed my. You could go in a bunch of different places here with this. Eight. Yeah, I think after this, I think well, you could. Obviously, we do have our. Uh, Kind of, we kind of have like the top 12. Like, yeah, I think it's just, again, it was just the orders that we really had going on here. Um, Sorry, I fully like deleted my talk, everything going on my thing here. Well, the, or the cap friendly delete your twenty six. <laughs> so number, number eight was Alex Nylander. Um, unfortunately, didn't really work out uh, in Buffalo. Uh, went to Chicago. Didn't really work out uh, the season prior to last, and he didn't. He didn't play at all this season. I don't think. Who, who's the defenseman that he got traded for? Uh, that um, let me back up. back to Buffalo. Who's uh, it was it was Henry Yoki Haru. Yoki Haru, uh, who like wasn't he's he? Pretty, actually, he's pretty. He's decent. Like he had, he had a. Uh, he's better than he's better than Nylander. Uh, he's right now, but whereas I still think Nylander like could still become like a third, second line player offensive guy still there's still hope in my mind just because i mean you don't have a father like as good as him you don't have a brother as good as him where i got it's like he's bad at hockey um i i 
and he wasn't he was picked high for a reason like uh and he did it's not like he had a necessarily really bad season in 2020 but i know it wasn't up to what we uh like what, what, we, like, what, what was what, meant to happen what we expect from him yeah um, but yeah, like you don't get a, you don't have a father as good as Michael Nylander and a brother as good as Willie Nylander. And like, you, you're not good. At and considering like he was a top eight pick too, like he's a top 10 pick. Um, I, there's, there's still something in there for me. I don't, I mean, I, you could argue he didn't get enough chance. Like, but I mean, he kind of did with that season 2020, but I don't know. There's still something there in my opinion. I know that's obviously like a cringe joke. Like, oh, there's always something there, you know, like say that with you levy and all that shit, <laughs> like, but. Yeah, um, didn't work out there. Um, Buffalo Sabres. So I, I originally actually had Line going here. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I had Line going here originally. Um, I just think again, alongside Eichel, they don't get Skinner in the and at this point, you know, you don't have that going on. So Line fits in much better. Line is a much better goal scorer, in my opinion, than Skinner is. I mean, you can argue. Skinner, you know, like no, no, here's the thing. Skinner's like a good goal scorer, like once every three years. Like, yeah, he, again, he, yeah, he can score. This season's the year now. This season, too. Like, he has to score good well, this year. I wouldn't that be awesome if, they, like, with no Eichel and with all the turmoil going on in the franchise, if, <laughs> he like, just has like a 75 point season. Yeah. He has like 45 goals, and like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he's and he's got like you know all the like. He actually turned out to be an advanced stat wizard. Like he's getting all <laughs> these, like you know, good course. Put on the numbers. penalty kill one. Yeah, <laughs> like alongside you know, fuck knows Tage Thompson and like Rasmus Asplund and all those guys. You know, you're going deeper down, and I can go, I can go deeper. I know a few guys down in the hell hole. I can go with Jack Quinn. They might as well bring him on the power penalty don't, kill. Don't don't mention my king Casey Middlestat. Whatever. You yeah, I have his hockey card. It's sitting in my car. I think it's like I stepped on a few times. It's, it's I'll, under my I'll mat. Take, I'll, I'll take it. Um, do, you, do, do, do you have anybody at eight who you're? Really uh, I have. With? I have um, as a replacement for Patrick Liney. I'm gonna go with Dubois. Uh, I think okay. that's use. Um, you can obviously. I think the next pick may just be the same guy who got drafted there. We'll get to that after. But yeah, I mean, it, it's. Obviously, you can see right now where I mean, I mean, right now they're. I was going to say their center core is fucked right now. They're, they're all, all their cores are fucked right now. Um, like everything's kind of messed up in Buffalo. Um, you know, he just brings. A, he's just a replacement for Ryan O'Reilly, essentially. Like that's essentially what he becomes. Um, obviously, nowhere, not even like in the same realm as, as Ryan O'Reilly, especially, especially defensively. Like he's not even. Uh, he does get overrated defensively just because he did play for Columbus in, in, in Tortorella system for a while, I believe. I, I, not to say that he just slouched defensively. Obviously, when he was in 2021 when he played for Columbus, he was actually literally a slouch defensively. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, he fits in with a Buffalo system. I mean, I guess O'Reilly could argue didn't, but I think that was more so probably O'Reilly just wanting out and, like, Buffalo wanting to tank. Um but yeah, that I think he can be right now. Obviously, would have been probably the first line center if he doesn't get traded. But considering what happened in Winnipeg, he probably would have gotten traded by now. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I yeah. Du, I was gonna say I really like Dubois. I think he's really coming yeah. into his own as a two C. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's his position right now, which which is good. I don't think I don't know if he's better. He's all, he has the potential to be better. Obviously, there's no reason. I mean, I don't think he was ever gonna like project for me to ever be a number one center on a winning team. That well, would be he, for me. That he, he reminds me of like the Bo Horvat type or like a, a, a not as talented, but still, you know, good. Yeah, I, I would Dylan, put, Dylan, Dylan, like a Dylan Larkin type. I would even put him in like a similar, like Yanni Gord. Maybe that's it. He's not. Like yeah. He's, I think he's a bit better, bit better and more talented than that, but yeah. I definitely think the two C role where he can even get a it's little bit perfect special, for him. It, we can get a bit of special teams time as well. Perfect. I think that's worked. I, great. I don't think you could really even see much of his talent on Winnipeg this year, which I don't, I think next year will definitely be better for him overall. His playoffs stats kind of were pretty bad this year. He wasn't even that good on Winnipeg this year. Um, I think it's funny and, how and the, it, well, the best well, player year, in that trade this year, I think Dubois and line, I think was a whole write off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously like, cause Roslovit was the, the best player yeah. <laughs> on both of the, in the whole, in the whole trade, which is funny. Uh, but yeah, I, both of those guys, I, I, I assume 
will have much better seasons, especially line A for me, just because I don't see him getting <laughs> that low goal totals. Like even with a shitty team like that, I don't think he gets lower than 25 goals a season in the worst case. Like I don't think he can, unless he gets injured or they're somehow actually worse. I think 25 goals is a target for him. I think Dubois yeah. can again hit like if you're getting 20, points. if you're getting 25 goals, maybe 50, 60 points out of Dubois, I think you're doing really well. Yeah, for Dubois right now, I think he can get like a 20, 40, and then because he, I mean, he's done that before. He's gone 27, 34. Like that's like that's 25, 35, 25, 40, 25, 35. Like that's, I mean, and and to be like, he doesn't. I don't think he gets much penalty kill time. Let me see that real quick. If he gets any, any I don't think he does thing. either, but he can kill some penalties if you need it. Yeah, he's not a penalty kill guy. I don't, and I mean, obviously, he's never been. He, for me, he's obviously, I mean, he's been good defensively, not to say he hasn't. I just feel like the uh, that's with a lot of Columbus players I, where like their defensive value definitely gets jacked up. Probably the same thing with Jones for me, where like Seth Jones, where like he was known as a, I mean, obviously, last season was pretty bad for him, but he was known like as a great two way guy where I'm like, this guy's primarily offensive. He just plays in the system. Well, Dubois, I think again, he he can't, he never really has been, but I always I, I felt like he could be that kind of guy who could just kill penalties for you. Oh I mean, yeah, I'm same. Sure, I'm sure. I'm Bow, sure. Right. I'm sure he'll tell you he'll do whatever helps the team, like that sort of yeah. hockey cliche. But like, I do think there is some truth to the to the matter of Dubois yeah. being a penalty killer, um, a, 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 probably the the second line power play center, and you know he he can contribute in ways outside of five on five. Um, yeah, I mean, like, uh, I guess we're t- it was Buffalo right now. He Buffalo, he, if he was on Buffalo right now, he'd probably be penalty kill. Pen- <laughs> he'd be on everything right now. Probably he'd be in like 22, 23 minutes a game. He'd probably get work his ass worked. But, uh, uh, yeah, Dubois, I, I, he, I, I always see, like, I always compared him to like a Bo Horvat, like, but like he's that as a ceiling. Um, I don't know if he ever reaches that, like uh, as a, like a one of the best second liners, second line centers in the league. But uh, he always he has the potential to. Uh, there's if he works a bit on the, I mean, I guess just how like the work ethic really was like last season for him. It looked like he was slouch, uh, slouch for a bit, even in Winnipeg for a bit. It kind of looked, it looked like it didn't work out. But I, I still believe it will. I don't think last season I consider a write off. Obviously, as a Canucks fan, <laughs> I consider it a write off. Maybe you too. Uh, you know, Heronic with leading the team <laughs> with with points. We'll get to him later too, Heronic. Um, but yeah, I get, ninth, ninth, I get uh, the ninth. So ninth was Mikhail Sergachev. Um, I mean, what I, he's so good too. <laughs> like he's he honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if like he came higher too. Like it, it would, I I wouldn't argue with it. I don't think. Like again, like I didn't argue with any of your line A picks or anything. With so I think. I think the 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 proper pick to make here is Sergachev. Yeah, um, he was originally How, picked. So, but what do you got? However, just to ensure this guy makes the top ten, I'm going with Carter Hart. No, 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 okay, no, 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 no. Are we are we doing this? I have. <laughs> I have are we actually doing this? There's I, no way he goes to Montreal. Why would he go to Montreal? All right, why, why all would Montreal right, take all right, him? Fine. <laughs> I know. Okay, you can pick him, but you understand my thought process. Of, oh, in sure. 2016. I, to, listen, <laughs> listen, I had Hart going tenth in this draft. Yeah, same. <laughs> I, 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 but I didn't know if you were actually going to take Hart. No, right? no, I, no, no, no. I'm not dumb. I, I know he's good. Okay, I know. I, I know. I, I joke about it with you. I know he's good. <laughs> he's on Team Canada. Fuck sakes, I, I like the guy. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fine. I'll give the real, <laughs> the very real pick. I'll give the very real pick of Mikhail Sergachev. Okay. Okay. Right before I said like uh, I haven't argued argued with you yet on any pick. I just I probably argued argued with you. That was that was that was worse than the Demco thing we did last week. No, like, because the Demco one was like in my sense like. I had like a thought process of how I could defend myself. I don't know if you could defend yourself on that one where you. Have... I think was that the year he signed the big ass contract? When was the year he signed that big contract? I think it was the year before. Yeah, so like you know what the thought process there. That that they, they all no no they all like here's the thing. There's no way Montreal actually. Oh, it was actually it was actually 2018 2019 he signed that. But what he signed before? Oh, he was yeah, not, I he feel was like a, he had a big deal beforehand too. Yeah, had a 6.5 million deal for six years in 2013 2012 2013. That's a pretty good deal actually, considering how good he was. Um. 
but I mean, it just in my head, like considering obviously the way it worked out now, it wouldn't make any sense. Um, that would essentially kind of be like a Bobrovsky situation with Knight, if you if you will, where okay. now you have this goal he's just sitting there making ten million dollars. Okay, all right. So let me go with Sergachev to yeah. Montreal. I think Mikhail Sergachev is is an underrated talent. Oh yeah, I mean again, purely, purely because he's playing on the third yeah. defensive line for the Lightning because that's how good the Tampa Bay Lightning are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, he also, like, he had 30 points last season as a bottom-pairing defense. Obviously, his playoff stats don't show it well, but, I mean, he was good in the playoffs. So, like, there's nothing more to say. I also, you know, when you talk about Sergeyev, you talk about the Drew Ann trade, which, yeah. I mean, probably Montreal. Yeah, Montreal's were getting that. I think um, my, we, my, well, I think Montreal bailed out Tampa Bay in that situation. Yeah. Because I don't think – the, the, the Drew and Tampa Bay thing was just not working anyway. Like, yeah, and they did, I mean, it did work out for that bit where they sold high on and, and it worked out because he got Sergeyev. Oh, sure. But I, I don't think it worked out for like, it wasn't yeah. going to work out in Tampa Bay. No way. And I don't, I, I don't believe that Sergeyev was like of equal value to what the situation, like, I guess it was more just Bergevin really loved Drew Ann and wanted <laughs> to get Drew Ann. Which and, I mean, yeah, I mean, I really love Drew. I think everyone I, really loved Drew when he came into the league. I mean, there's I think no people, reason not to. Well, I think people do like, I even like him now. The issue, yeah, I don't, th- I think he's still a, probably a pretty good second line like guy and get you 60 points. Like, I like my, his pro- my issue with Montreal is asset management and just like you're trying yeah. to convert Drew Ann to be a center, which he is not. And, and it didn't work with Domi. Well, I don't know why you're trying it again. Like, and, and so. That's where it really frustrates me on, on the behalf of trading Sergachev for this guy who you're asking not to, you're asking to do something that he's not yeah. paid to do. Thankfully, and, I think Dvorak might take that role in the second line and where you got Dvorak drew in now. Probably, which I, I'm, I think is an improvement, but that's what I didn't like about trading Sergachev for what you want, what you tried to get when it, it just seems like a lot. Otherwise, yeah. Sergachev is a really, fantastic left defenseman yeah. number honestly on a lot of teams he could have been a number one like he could be a number one defenseman on lots of teams honestly I, I would say i would say probably like 10 to 15 teams he could probably be like a top top like top four defenseman i even like consider him on like a better like arguably like like a level like shabbat kind of like even though i, I think sure. sugar is probably the better defensive player but like you know, that's, that's, that's his level. That's his level. That's his level. Like he is like that good where he can be a number one defenseman on, on like an average team. Like yeah. maybe, I don't know if Shabbat's like, I don't know if Shabbat, he, I, he has the potential, like just like Sergei to be a number one guy. Um, But yeah, I mean, Montreal, I mean, <laughs> does Sergei I guess it kind of bite them in the ass. Cause does, I don't know if Sergei helps him win the Stanley cup this year. If he got Sergei, cause obviously Drew, I didn't play to personal reasons, but. You know, Sergeyev, I don't know if he helps him. He he might help him win a game or two instead of Gustafson, but I don't see it. Might, it, well, it, might, it might be like a Romanoff situation where it's just like, hey, we're just trying to find the right time to use this guy. And it's just like, yeah. well, when uh, is that right time? When Again, I, I've always been high on him too because at, at one point he actually was considered one of the best defense, like if not the best defensive prospect yeah. in the world. And I still think he's like, he has like Sergeyev potential. I think he could be that good. Um. If he gets the time, I just don't know if Montreal is going to give it to him, which is unfortunate, just because I do believe he's so good. And he showed it. Like, he came in, like, the first game of the playoffs, for a second shift, he knocks Petran right on the head, like, right on the floor. Like, well, and, and, that, and that's what I feel like with... Scored a goal in a Stanley Cup final, not even not even Sergeyev scored last playoffs. Like, come on. Well, and that's what I I'm, I, I would be concerned with if Sergeyev was still in Montreal, is just how they would use him and the yeah. asset management, which yeah. which not great. Okay, so I did I did take Sergeyev <laughs> 9 to Montreal. <laughs> yeah, just because your thought process was like, I'm not going to take heart number 10. Yes. Uh, so uh, before I get to the obvious here, uh, Tyson Jost uh, was taking number 10. Um, he's a guy former, former Penticton V Tyson Jones. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, obviously, I mean, he never really penned out the way they wanted him to, where maybe they want, like, they're looking at him. What like new hook is to them now. Yeah. Essentially. That's what they're looking at him. Um, didn't work out, but he's become really good defensively. Like he is actually, he's like one of their main penalty killing guys and he's become pretty good defensively. Um, obviously like, offense uh, is a bit lackluster. 
I, I, I like a a um uh a a way better Marcus Kruger. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, I, a, a a way more talented Marcus Kruger is what Tyson like Tyson Jose is because that's how I just view it. Like that's how I view those guys who play like bottom six minutes, but they also are on the penalty kill yeah. and they you know are strong defensively. Um grinders yeah. is not the right word that i'm looking for oh yeah because he's not a grind no he, he had it, 35 points in 33 games in north dakota that's not a grinder that's but, not but a it, grinder but it, you know how they talk about like in baseball where they talk about guys who like chew yeah. innings like yeah. guys who will just like eat innings and they'll just keep going and they'll yeah. make it tough for their opponent like that's what i feel like tyson jose is yeah uh, he has a similar score uh point shares to players such as uh pavel zaka who's pretty decent adam lowry then you get into you know jimmy vc uh, Rod- Rostislav Olesh, Nick Dow. Nick Dow is pretty good, to be honest. Um, Tanev's good too. Um, Jimmy VC. <laughs> that what was the tweet last last year? Jimmy VC is the most dangerous, useless player I've ever seen, which is true. He he uh he'll he'll uh he'll just he'll do something nice, and like you actually don't understand how he could do what he does with the puck after he does like this nice move. Like he actually and then just, and, then, and then it'll just like like saucer pass it in the middle and it'll just get like knocked down by a defender. Yeah. Or, or he'll just lose the puck in a situation where I didn't even know it was actually possible to lose the puck. But I, yeah, like I, again, I, I, make, to make another reference, like the shortstop who can make like the Jeter type throw. And it's like, wow, that guy's rocks. And then like the next play, he just bobbles like the, the, the slow roller. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of shortstops, I watched the 2015 uh, seventh inning back of uh, the, 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 oh, the Rangers uh, Blue Jays game where Bautista hit the home run. Dude, Elvis Andrews had a brutal inning. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that was a really that was bad. Yeah. Like <laughs> that was bad. Really like those one, one of the errors wasn't his fault. The other two were just dude. He, I mean, it was his fault too, but it wasn't as much as the other ones. There no, was no, it was, it, was, it was definitely the uh, the the two errors that were primarily his fault. They really factored into that loss. The first, uh, the, the, the 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 one that wasn't as bad. Like, yeah, <laughs> they, they like if you just did that. If you just take the <laughs> one, like that would be okay. Like you can. That's a uh, that's a top five moment in Toronto sports history, probably. The, like the, I mean, the Bati, the Batista. Yeah, hundred percent. Like that. That I, even. I feel yeah. like it's. I feel like it's the Batista home run, and then the Kawhi uh, shot, and then um, just winning the championship too, probably. Probably just winning the championship overall. You got to throw in some random TFC moment because we're you know, <laughs> inclusive and then... just Giovinco playing. Um, <laughs> who's your? We're getting off track. Here. Who's your? Uh, uh, yeah. So Jost, uh, he he's worked out for them, and they got a few other guys who can replace him there. Um, number ten, number ten. Here I go. So number ten, I have Carter Hart. <laughs> Carter Hart is my pick for number ten. Obviously, last season was definitely an anomaly. There's no way he doesn't come back this season with a with much better numbers. You won't see him having an eight seven seven and and three point six seven, and and. Again, unfortunately for the Flyers, Brian Elliott didn't have his random 940 season, which he has every few years. I think he's unf- like, you know, you know, that's just Brian Elliott, too, where it was just like, OK, fine, I'll be good and then get my contract and like, I'll actually have a job for the next few years kind of thing. Yeah, he didn't have that. But <laughs> I do think with Carter Hart, um, I remember when he was like, because he like, obviously I was paying attention to him as the Everett Silvertip fan. And, yeah. you know, there was the talk then like this is five years ago talk then yeah. about like ah taking a goalie within the top 10 or maybe even the first round like ooh, yeah. that's, that's a little which again i'm happy that stigma's kind of gone the deep pietro stigma well, because it really is stupid if we're being honest well now i nowadays like i think we're like nowadays i think there's still a mix of um smart teams and bad yeah. teams but i think we're getting more smart teams where yeah. teams are just like okay we're just gonna take the guy that we really want yeah. And I mean, Philly could have taken him in the first round. They had a first round pick, but yeah. and they Ron- ended up t- taking German Rubsov, who's another guy who like I actually thought it'd work out well, like from his Russian stat. And then I- it's like weird, like right after he got drafted, there was no growth, and, and that's a no. guy like, yeah, I-, that- I don't know. I just thought that was a weird pick. But that's but that's where I thought like it was a wise play by Ron Hextall, who was the Flyers GM at the time. It was like. He probably could have got him in the first round, and people would have been like, "Okay, sure, yeah. like he's the like, best goalie. He's had all this, you know, recognition in junior. Yeah, okay, take him in the first round. Yeah, but he said he's smart enough to like, no, I'm going to take him in the second round, and you know, 
get another first round player, even though that first round player didn't yeah. really work out for the Flyers. So, and I think he, uh, I, I don't, I've said on this podcast too many times how good I think Carter Hart is and yeah. can be. Uh, he, he probably, I will be surprised if he's not playing for Team Canada at the Olympics. Um, um, it depends on his season. Now, if he really does actually become like the nine, like 15, 20 goalie, if he's, if he does have a nine, 15, he doesn't make the team. In my opinion, he has to actually have I, a really good season for me, for him to make the team. I was going to say, I don't think it's guaranteed, but I think, yeah, he, it's not guaranteed, he, he, but he I see why he's way on. Yeah. So that's, that's um, a good, that's a good pick. Uh, that's, and just in the terms of Colorado too, like at this point, they don't have Grubauer. They're kind of in that weird, I think, I don't know if this they, is they were in that, they were, they were in that like weird like stretch for a while. They were like the team wasn't actually that bad, but it's like you're going through like Semyon Varlamov, um, yeah. trying to think of who else was Colorado. There's some cool. Budai going on in there. There's a lot yeah. of stuff. Let me pull up that actual roster because that one was it was. I mean, it was obviously it was a rough team. Uh, it's probably I think that was the 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 next season after was the that really bad team that like historically garbage team. I think that was the Pickard year. Let me see. Yeah, Calvin Pickard. Semyon Varlamov, Spencer Smith, Spencer Martin, and uh, uh, Jeremy Smith. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a he was the guy who played ten games for that team. Are, are you excited to see Spencer Martin as this Canucks fourth goalie yeah. here? I mean, he didn't look too bad. I'm not gonna lie, he didn't look too bad when I was watching him. Um, um, okay, so so yeah, Hart goes to Colorado. Colorado has their goalie of the future. They probably give him a bi- a bridge deal. He's probably making that's like he got he has right in Philly right now. Yeah, so he probably is making five million in Colorado right now. Better than what you have to give up for. You gave up like a King's ransom for Kemper. Not to say he's worth. I think he's worth it. You know, but Timmons in a first, and then you know it's a bit too much. But they kind of had to do that considering their win now mode. Um, but yeah, which instead of taking. I mean, you lose Jost, but I think you can, you know, you can find, yeah, uh, you can, you, you can find, find Tyson. Person. Yeah, you can find a Tyson Jost replacement out there. I mean, the Red Wings already got there with Mitchell Stevens, right? So pretty <laughs> much, <laughs> you can find your replacement out there, and um, you, you can't yeah. find a replacement for a goalie like that. So that's a good pick at ten. So I guess we can move on to eleventh. Eleventh uh, and twelfth were swapped between each other. The Ottawa Senators and New Jersey Devils. Yes. Um. So it was the twelfth overall pick and the eightieth overall pick going to the Devils for the eleventh overall pick. The twenty, the eightieth overall pick ended up being Brandon Gignac, who I don't think has even played in the NHL yet. I wouldn't assume he like he played. He played one game in twenty nineteen. Um, playing for the Jacksonville Iceman in the ECHL right now. So I don't know about that. Um, but Mike McLeod, Logan Brown, obviously Logan Brown was taking 11th. Um, I don't know if you have Logan Brown 11th. He, he obviously didn't work out. He got traded recently, didn't he? Yeah. He got traded for Zach Sanford from the yeah. Blues. Stanley Cup champion, Zach Sanford. Um, I, I don't have Logan Brown going 11th. <laughs> he's um, a guy who I still think. I think he's still out. good. Like I think he's, he's still, I, I, I honestly, I see him as a third line center guy. Yeah, I, but, but, I, but, but I think that's the, that's the thing with that. Some people don't like to do is that like, you know, they want the next like top line, whatever. People are looking for Matthews when yeah, there is the there, tenth overall. It, well, and like there is value at finding like the Tyson Joses of the world or the Michael yeah. McClouds or the Logan Browns, tenth, eleventh, whatever. Yeah. Um eleventh this this pick though, I'm going Clayton Keller. Yeah, that's who I had here. No, so, no doubts on that for me. So Keller is he's a bit overpaid he's a bit overpaid he's also like i feel like dvorak was also he had the thing where like he's in arizona so he might be better somewhere else but i think he was just also overrated too for me well the thing with keller too is that i think he was uh john Chaka's guys and so Chake, when you yeah. make, like you tend to overvalue your own guys right yeah and right. That, that's not to say that keller is a bad guy i think he's a really good player yeah I just think at what did he make an eight million? Like he, I think it's not it's not that, but it, it's still enough to where he's overpaid. Like it, it's it's like he's, over, he's overpaid by two or three million. He, he's making seven point one five up until twenty twenty eight. The last few yeah. years of his deal, last four years of his deal is a uh, no move clause and a no trade clause. Yeah, I would prefer him at like five and a half six more than yeah, because I don't see I don't ever see him being a first line. Uh, you know just. Dist- Distributor, like just goal scorer. Not in my. I think he's a really good second line guy. I, I I don't know who I would attribute to him. Like who's a comparable to him? A lesser. I don't know. I I always go with the Leafs players for these. I don't know why. I'm not even a Leafs fan just because they have like 
the, maybe the, 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 Le- the, Le- the Leafs should definitely like in the future be um, like a, a case study on roster. Basis. But <laughs> Thomas Tatar is a comparable for me. Um, just in in his prime more so, but maybe less. Eh, I think I think Keller's a bit even. more skilled Tom than Thomas Tatar, but, but I I see where you're coming from there. Where it's like I I'm trying to think of a comparable player. Um, probably Tatar is obviously a better uh, a two way guy, two way winger, but. Yeah. I don't know. He, he is comparable in the sense where, I mean, it is, I don't know. I don't know if it's unfortunate, but, you know, second year, I mean, his, his rookie year, essentially, like he had 65 points in 82 games. He was fourth in college voting. He's, uh, there's Besser and a few other guys that, in that year, so it's kind of hard to win. But 65 points, 82 games in your first season is not is good, but he's never been able to capture that again. Well, and again, I just keep making comparisons here, but like, it kind of reminds he kind of reminds me a little bit of like Donovan Mitchell in a way where like <laughs> where like Mitchell like had the really good rookie mm-hmm. season when he came to Utah, right? Yeah. And then he kind of was just like he posted the similar stats, more or less the same stats like um, in in a, in a couple of years after like for me it's just the fact that he he'll go and he'll actually I don't not to say that <laughs> maybe I'm making fun of not making fun of but underrating Keller here a bit but Mitchell's a guy who at least works hard every time he's on the court. And I don't even, I don't know if I read necessarily even buy that anymore, just because he had, I think he had a great season last season. And he, in the well, playoffs, just, the well, bubble well, was amazing. Well, that's just with, with Keller now, where Keller, like he had yeah. like, a really strong rookie season and he kind of fell he, off. He's kind of fell off a little bit. But people, when you come into the league, right, when you post these rookie, you know, rookie numbers, and then people were like, okay, you're going to go more, you can do more, because this is just your first year. Like you can do yeah. more and you can put more. And a lot of times it just doesn't happen because the coach is yeah. giving you more ice time or it's, you know, it's year two or whatever. Yeah. And people are, are, are looking at you differently. So that's again, Ke- Keller on the second line left wing for 90% of the teams is a great yeah. fit. He is overpaid by one, one and a half million, maybe $2 billion. Yeah. I moment. think probably one and a half, but two, you can make an argument for you can make an argument. Part. But I think at a, at eleven in this redraft, I think it's a really really good pickup. For yeah, a, and it, it, he's only dropped four spots, which is like, I mean, that's pretty good. Like, I know it's only it's a recent draft in the sense that it's like it's been five years, so there's still guys that might come in, you know. But I think oh, we kind of oh, have sure. like a top. Like, Jordan Cairo could, you know, really. Yeah, he's a guy who actually have close, like pretty close here. But you know, I think the top. 15 maybe doesn't even change after this it might maybe maybe the top 20 doesn't change it maybe yeah. but it might uh, at least i mean the top 10 i feel like is exact but you know the, the the next 10 might change is what i meant to say sorry um but yeah keller is a good pick that's who i had um i guess i can move on to number 12 who, number 12 the other part of that trade michael mcleod uh again i don't know he is on a lower I don't see, I guess maybe they've been Logan Brown in a way are kind of the same players. Yeah. But I guess Michael McLeod got, has had much more playing time. I don't think Logan Brown's gotten a chance. That's a yeah. difficult thing where like, I don't really watch these guys in the, in the, in the HL. I don't really, I mean, I can't. Oh, you're really, not watching the, the big. No, I'm not watching Hartford Wolfpack. I'm not that big of a Rangers guy. <laughs> big, big, Hampton, big Hampton Senators or whatever. Albany, Albany Devils. I don't even know if they play in Albany anymore. No, they I, I, I'm just like, I'm just thinking of like Bakersfield Condors. Uh, yeah, Utica Comets. No, it's Abbotsford Canucks now, baby. Um, Michael McLeod didn't work out. Didn't really have a good season uh, last year. I mean, it wasn't horrible, but it wasn't good. Um, I don't that, see that's him. what you could that's what you could say about the devils all entire yeah. year. <laughs> uh, they'll have a better season this year. Uh Hughes will definitely I think I told you he might I think he can get to like a 60 65 point level with Kako, both of those guys. Um that's another one we can do a few years down the line is that draft. Cause I I hope uh, I obviously I don't know about maybe Hughes stays at number I don't again, I think we always talk about like Hughes and Kako are the, the right picks. Like, and that's what I think about this draft too. We're like, you know, line in Matthews are the right picks. It just didn't work out. Um, Michael McLeod is not who I have. I think this one was really the end of the, the, the top 12 we had is it's Sam Gerard. Yeah, that's who I have there. That's what um, I have. Yeah. He, he really became into his own the past few years and he's on a good cap hit too. Uh, he's a, a he's a sm- smaller guy, not really too small. I mean, five, ten, he's my height, but it, Maybe on defenseman, that's not what you want. But, I mean, he makes up for it offensively in, like, the way he can distribute the puck. He is such a – I don't know how to even explain it. He could – 
he's a he's probably like a lesser Shabbat in a way, in a, in, a, in a way, or lesser Hughes, like like in that in that realm of a. He's not. He's uh, not. He doesn't have the elite. Uh, he doesn't have the elite. Um, scale I guess in a way, ability. yeah. He's a. He's not a hard. I guess no. He's a hard working guy, obviously, but. I would. He doesn't really have the IQ of a Makar Fox, like who can like really see the ice in an elite way. But I mean, he's such a skilled player. I mean, I don't know what to say. He had 32 points in 48 games last year. Obviously, it really didn't work out in the playoffs. He looked lost in the Vegas series, which is really the downfall for him is the defensive side. Which, I mean, I I, I do um I do have some hope on that side for him. Obviously, he's still uh, he's still on the younger end of. I mean, he's only 23. So there's obviously time to improve on that. There's still a few years before you really get into your prime. So I, I still have hope. And, and they're, and the Avalanche probably are working on that too. There's no way they're not working on that because that was the main issue, especially in the Vegas series, because he just looked like he was getting tossed in circles by Vegas. I will say the analytics like Gerard, um, you know, the Jay, yeah. Fresh, the Jay Freshes and the Dom Lushins of the world, you know, pr- singing his praises quite a bit. And I, he is what made like part of the reason why Colorado's defense is so elite is yeah. because of the two- well, the contributions of Taves and like all those guys who yeah. just came in. Even like Timmons was going to come in, and obviously that didn't work because the Kemper said, I think he could have been a guy. They saw Byram, you know, there's, there's there's so many guys there that that can come in and become all well, like it's like a Tampa situation. We got all these guys pretty much. Um, I have Gerard 12, I think he. Yeah. rounds out you know the there's not much to say about that one too probably, it's kinda... well it's like probably like the third or fourth tier of yeah. players in this draft class yeah for sure um right i guess if, in new jersey right now like that position where he would play would be filled by ty smith um who would be up next be i mean, I mean gerard as a second line second defensive pairing guy is not bad at all that's what he is right now and it's worked so yeah. I, I mean sam gerard there and the second pairing right there like is not bad at all no so 13 is who uh, is, yeah. where I, is where I'm drafting next. 13, so 13 overall. That was originally Jake Bean, who is currently a Seattle Kraken. Yeah. Um, that didn't work out too. I mean, it was more so. It's kind of like the Hayden Flurry thing. I mean, Hayden Flurry did get time, but he never really, he never really got the full chance where I, I, I believe that he deserved. Um, it was it was Carolina like running up like taking a bunch of chances with picks that like you know on yeah. defensemen like they loaded up on defensemen and some of those picks on defense have looked really good like look at the, the yeah. slavin uh pesci um you know some of those picks have worked out well and some of the you know hayden flurry and jake beans haven't quite worked, yeah. worked out uh 13th though i'm gonna go philip peronic philip peronic who do i have there actually oh yeah you go ahead so we're on the same page here again uh i mean i had heronic in, in the same ballpark so i mean i don't blame you for this one Okay, just Heronic. I, I, uh, there's a, you could argue with some other players who are on the board here, but yeah. Philip Heronic, I think, has the m- highest ceiling of players uh, available at this. Point. Yeah, no, that's. And, I, I have one more guy above him, which is probably the. <laughs> probably, probably, I, I'm, I'm guessing, yeah, but Heronic, I, I think, is a really talented defenseman who's been put in a tough place because of yeah. where the Red Wings are right now. And he probably won't get the same level of attention this year because I don't think the Red Wings are going to be good again this year. But I think he can be with the Shabbats. He can be with the Gerards of like the of the world. He's not I don't think he's going to be close to like the Adam Fo- Adam Foxes or McAvoy's or Chick. I don't think he's at that level. But he's like he can be like a, a tier below that. That's yeah. where I I like Mikhail Sergachev. I think it's where uh you know Harona can be like a um step, I, yeah a step um, below the real elite guys in this draft class. That's where I see Harona, and he you know might maybe in Carolina it's a different story. Maybe in Carolina he really pops off, but. That's 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 my uh, that's my reasoning for Heronic at third. Yeah. I mean, I understand that pick. Uh, he was all. I think. I mean, you already touched on everything I was gonna say. He he got thrown pro- probably the worst position. Like maybe Darlene's in a worse position, but I mean, Heronic got thrown in. Like he was the number one guy on a team that sucked. 
at least with Heronic and the Red Wings, like there is light. Like there is yeah. light at the end of the tunnel. You can see how this team becomes yeah. successful. I don't know that you can find that with the Sabres right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's yeah, because the Sabres don't look like they have the plan. Um, Steve, it's the eyes are playing. So he, you know, there's always something you gotta look out for. Um, but yeah, Heronic fit there. Um, Heronic uh and Carolina, that from the reason again. I think I probably actually would have had Heronic going there had Boston had the 14th pick or the 13th pick. Sorry. Um, it's just the fact that uh, they have so many great defensemen, especially at this point, and they're getting Dougie the next year. So that was my thought process. Like, you know, if they get Heronic there, do they even ever get Dougie? Um, but yeah, I, I understand your pick there. And Heronic is, I mean, uh, he'll be better than last year. Not to say he was bad last year. He was decent, but it was, it was a war. It was <laughs> the worst case scenario, essentially. Wait, for when him. I mean, no offense to like you know when you're getting compa- when you're getting on the same D pair line as um, Danny DeKaiser. Yeah, that, that's play, a bit. Or, or when you're having to play alongside Mark Stahl at times. Yeah, there's it, a, that's a rough left side there. I'm not gonna lie. That's um, a, it's a tough look. It's a tough yeah. look. No offense um, to DeKaiser or Stahl, but it's a tough he'll look. probably still get first line minutes this year. Probably Cider and Stetcher behind him. See, I like the right side. side. Like those right. Yeah, the right right side's good. Stetcher is probably a is a really good third pairing, like top of the line third pairing. Yeah. Um. You got fourteen. Fourteen. So yeah, I guess kind of gave it up there. Fourteen is who I had. Um, is where I had Heronic. Um, just because it made sense. Another because McAvoy there went there originally. Um, have another right-handed defenseman. Um. I'm just gonna go with Jordan Cairo then. Like, that's who I had above him. Oh, you are gonna that's... take. You are gonna take Cairo. Yeah, fourteen. Um. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, again, like he doesn't really fit. It doesn't seem like he fits the Boston system. It was just for me, I guess. Uh, mm, kinda, I don't know. He kind of does. I, I guess he does. He is a. He's not the best two way guy. It's not like he's a liability defensively, but. Let me pull up his stats for this season here, just because I I, I kind of got was, lost. He, he was a big part of their of the Blues run. Yeah, like, he, was, he, like he was arguably like um, he was like an near an All Star level at his peak this year. Kind of trailed yeah. off towards the end. I'm not gonna lie, he did trail off a bit towards the end. Um, well, but yeah. uh, Scott, Scott and I talked about this in the last podcast in the Central Division preview, where it's like the Blues had to, like they played the Coyotes like for the first seven yeah. years last year. <laughs> And then they're going up against like the Vegas and Colorado and, yeah. and, 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 you know, Minnesota, like the end of the year, it's like, yeah, they didn't have a great end last year, but it's for a good reason. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's who I went with Cairo there. Um, okay. I guess I can pull up Boston. I, I, again, there's a few guys I could have went with there. Again, we're at the point where we're at the, you know, we don't know what's going on here. Uh, I don't know. They, maybe cause obviously like he, he's only really came into his own now. Where back then, like they, I guess if it worked, if it worked out in the way it's worked out now, Kairu comes in now when Krejci leaves. You know, he's a second second line guy. He, he's, I think he played, he can play wing too, but he's a he's a center as well. So you know, have him on the second line. Maybe you're kind of throwing him in too quick, arguably. But I don't know. I think having he's, him he's, as a replacement. He, he's a really good middle six player. Yeah, he's a replacement for Krejci. I mean, he had a great season this year. Not, not to. Not to undermine that at all, but as a second guy to Krejci after, you know, right, right now, I think that would be good. And maybe that, you know, that kickstarts the brusk and it kickstarts a few guys who, I mean, I would have said Richie too, not to say that he's been like he, but he's on Toronto now. Um, Did I also say Jake Bean plays for the Kraken? Uh, he got traded to Columbus, didn't he? <laughs> he did get traded to uh, actually, Yeah, because he got traded yeah. to Columbus. I think you're, yeah, you were thinking... Tra- you're thinking of uh Kale Flurry, I think. Is that who you were thinking of? Uh, or Hayden I, Flurry? I swear, for some reason there's a, there's a part of me there. There, I swear Jake Bean went to the Kraken at one point, but I don't know. Maybe I'm, my mind's messing me up. I think it's just he all the mock seems drafts. Like a, he definitely seems like a guy. I think it's the Kraken. mock drafts messed me up, dude. <laughs> he's definitely <laughs> a, he's definitely a guy the Kraken would take. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I guess Kairu there. Uh, fifteenth originally. Uh, Minnesota Wild was Luke Cunning. Uh, who do you have there? Do you have Luke Cunning? I do not have Luke Cunning. Uh, you know what? I actually did. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, actually, I had two guys not moving from the position in this draft. So I, I'm going with uh, Jesper Bratt. Ooh, that's my next guy. <laughs> so Bratt, um, he's an interesting dude. Like, he, he's, he's like he's another late bloomer guy, isn't a he? A late bloomer, and he's playing for this Devils team that's not really like that good. 
First of all, like, like, a great like, pick by New Jersey, sixth round, and you get yes. this guy. You know, that's a top tier pick. He was the guy who, mo- who moved up. We get the exact number, 146 spots in my mock draft. And I think he's a better fantasy hockey player than, uh, not that I do a lot of fantasy hockey, but he definitely is like a late, you know, pick in fantasy hockey where it's just like, oh yeah, Jesper Brad, he'll put up like 40 <laughs> points this year. Like that's just like, it's, it, I don't know. It kind of feels like in a way, like he's the obvious he was, 40, yeah. po- 40 he point, 40 point play. He was on point for, he was on pace, sorry, for near 60 points. He's on pace to get over 50 and near 60. So, I mean, I mean, that's pretty good. That's like better than, I think that's already, I think it's better than Hughes plays. Like, that's like one he, of the leading scores on team. You know what you're getting with Jesper Brad. Like, it's yeah. not a surprise. He's just a, a, a scoring winger who can, you know, put in goals and that's about it. Yeah. Um, they he, have, they he, have a he, lot of guys coming in too. They, they, they have a lot of guys coming in. He'll, he'll put it on, he'll, Get some power play time. Jesper Bratt, that's my pick, 15. Yeah, and they're pretty good with late drafts. They got Sharon Govich in the fifth round, 2018, too. Like, they, they have, you know, obviously Blackwood. Um, I heard he's, like, the not vaccinated guy. On the yeah, team, he, he's, kinda, the, he's the unvaccinated player. Yeah, that one, that's rough. Um, but they got, they've gotten Kerfoot in this fifth round. They got, what's his name? Where I, Where is he? I know he's here. Miles Wood, their fourth round guy there. Um, I can I can go further down if I want to, but you know they have such a good core coming up. I know, I know the pick was Minnesota there. Um, does uh, sorry, who you damn? My brain just went there for a so, second. So now you're you're going uh 16. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so Jesper Bratt in Minnesota. I don't know if that fits there. I, again, I think the main thing for Minnesota was a center, so that's why I went with Luke Cunning because they just don't have they struggled the center thing because you know instead of Victor Ross because as, as a center there instead of you know you put who's a center who's in the trade talks. I don't know. Even if you put Dubois there alongside Zuccarello and Kaprizov, does that help them right now? You know, there's, a, so I don't know if Cunning helps them, but it's a, he's worked out for them this year, obviously. Is and that it, your pick is Luke Cunning to 16th? Uh, that's going to be my pick probably. So uh, yeah. So 15th had Luke Cunning, just like in the same spot. Phoenix uh, is going to be Luke Cunning. Uh, Phoenix originally got that draft picked uh, because they acquired uh, this guy. This this yeah. guy, this jersey I'm wearing, uh, Pavel Datsuk. Uh, unfortunately, not a good way. <laughs> they kind of took his. They took the, they took the garbage like they do right now uh, of Datsuk's contract and the first round pick, 16th overall in this draft for a second round pick in this draft, a first round pick in this draft, and Joe Vitali. It's another name I haven't heard in a while. Oh wow, um, I, have not, I was not expecting to hear that. Name. Yeah, so Datsuk, uh, the first round pick in the Coyote side uh, was Chikrin. And the first and second round pick was Heronic as a second rounder and Chaloski. He's in first Seattle. Rounder. He's in yeah. Seattle. <laughs> this is, yeah, he's in Seattle. Uh, we'll get to the 20th pick later. We'll talk about Chaloski later. Um, I'm going to go with Luke Cunning. He had a great season this okay. year. Um, yeah, I, I don't, he's not going to be the guy who, um, sorry, he had a good se- season this year with Nashville. Um, he, uh, I mean, he had a good year. He had, he was good in the playoffs in that six game series they had with Carolina. He, he, he had a good season. I think he can be like, you know, I think he was on the third line, probably behind Duchesne and Johansson. Right. But it's a guy who I, I understand. Like he, yeah, he's probably, I don't know if he's a middle six guy, but he's a really, I think he's a decent third line guy. Um, yeah. We're kind of in slim pickings here, so I don't really have much to say. Yeah. About we, he's we, just a, we, we can go a little bit quicker here going through some of these guys, <laughs> but he's a good player. I don't, I don't have anything bad to say about him. He, no. Um, who do I compare was, him he to? Was, he, he was kind of somebody I was hoping that uh, the Kraken would take in the uh, expansion draft. Cause I yeah. believe he was um, available yeah. if I'm not. Mistaken. But yeah, I think he, I don't remember. There's so much going on. Um, he was traded, I think for Nick Benino. Let's see. I think it was. Yeah, of it trade traded by the Minnesota Wild with fourth round pick to Nashville Predators for Nick Bonino. I don't know if Nick, yeah, but I don't know. That's it's again, we're in that slim picking territory. He's turned out to be good, but not to say that he's turned. I don't think Minnesota is necessarily really mad with that pick just because there's not really much going on here. Obviously, it didn't work out for them, but yeah, we're just we're just taking guys that we like, it seems like at this point. Yeah, and I like Luke Cunning, he's fun. he's fun. All I right. guess I have my Nashville Predators jersey back there. That's who he plays for. Um, 16 or 17, I guess. Right 17. Now. I am going to go with, uh, my guy, Tyson Jost, who we Ooh. talked quite a bit earlier. Um, former Penticton B 
solid. He's gonna be pl- he's playing third line left wing for the Avs. He's gonna be playing with Alex Newhook this year. That's gonna be a really fun line. I I think another you know full season in the in the in you know in the show uh, will really make a difference. I like I like his style of play. Go Tyson Joe. So he's my. Yeah, favorite. I mean, yeah, he's I don't player. know who the original team is here, but sorry. I don't know who the original team. Oh, is. 17 was Nashville with uh, Dante Fabro, who you, oh, okay. I don't know. That one was one where I always like in NHL, he's always medium elite potentials. So you always think he's going to be good. And he always I, turns out to be 89 overall, but it's, it's difficult because he's not really been that good for Nashville. Um, I, I have him in the top 20. Sorry. I have him in the top 20. Oh, wow. Uh, I don't, uh, I actually don't even have him on my radar. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't have him. Uh, do I, I, I guess I, uh, I mean, I thought about it, but yeah. Um, number 17 is actually, I had a damn, who do I put there? I guess I can go with him. Uh, 18th. I'll go with, uh, Jesse Puyi RV. So, um, so I guess, uh, Winnipeg originally got that deal, which is the fleece of flyers here pretty bad. Um, so they take the 18th and the 79th pick in this draft first and third for, the 22nd and 36, a first and second, which is they moved up, but yeah, they gave up a second for it. Um, the first obviously turned out to be for Philly, turned out to be German Rubtsov, who didn't work out at all. Um, I don't know, he's a guy I was high on. I don't think he'll ever play in the NHL anymore. It sucks. Uh, Pascal Burge, 36, didn't work. Uh, Jets with the picks get uh, Luke Green and Logan Stanley. And Luke Green's a guy who I always thought would could work out. I don't know if he does. He might get some playing time, but I don't think he even has a contract right now. I always thought he could have got some playing time. Um, I don't know if Winnipeg still has his rights or if he is a UFA, but I, I always thought he could have had uh, a decent career, but I don't know if that's working out. But Logan Stanley, I mean, I don't know. He, he's worked out pretty well. He, was, uh, he wasn't also on my radar. But, I mean, I think he could be. He's another guy who could be down the line if we do this again in five years or something, right? Probably. Yeah, I mean, he, he showed really good signs of, I mean, I scored he scored two goals in a game this year <laughs> against uh, Montreal, I remember. Um, in the, was it game four? I think it was just game four. I think it was game three or four. It was in Montreal, I remember. I was going to say, I think it was game four. Yeah, he scored two goals. So, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's uh, something to go go on um i'm gonna go with jesse pulley rv uh talked about him when uh, we were at the fourth overall pick there um a guy I always thought it would work out didn't work out um came back and he, he's become pretty good i i, I he's got to improve on the power play um he needs to i mean because you know and i think it'll benefit him if he can play with dry sidle barry and, and and mcdavid obviously i mean it benefits anyone who can play alongside those guys um but if he's there instead of Hyman, you know, he, he, Hyman's pretty good, but Pooley RV is probably the better offensive player. And he, if he can work it out with them, I, in Edmonton, I think that can work out better for him. Um, in, in Winnipeg, if he stayed there, I don't know, he, maybe they don't get, you know, Veselainen or someone else who's like a guy down the, like that might come up. I don't know if Veselainen's another guy, kind of like Pooley RV, who like, I don't know if that'll ever work out, but I don't know. We'll see. That's who I want to go with 18. My favorite part of Jesse Pugliarvi's game is his face. Pugliarvi faces. Like- <laughs> yeah. And, and his stories were like uh, some random, that random guy just picked up Pugliarvi on the, on the, on the road. Yeah. It's like, Hey, I just picked up Jesse Pugliarvi. <laughs> and it all, that was like, like his Albert next. That was perfect. Pugliarvi face and Eli Manning face are like my two favorite things <laughs> in sports. So that's a good pick. I, I had Pugliarvi going yeah. 16th. So that's about the same ballpark. Yeah. 19th. I think I know what you're going with here. I could go a bunch of different ways. I went with I, my last two picks for defensemen. I feel like the same with you. Okay. That's not, uh, do I want to go 19 and 20 or defensemen for me? Okay. 19th. I'm not going to go defenseman. 19th. I'm going to go Dylan Dubé. Ooh, he's a guy out of my radar though. I okay. give you that. I like Dubé. Dubé. Uh, Dylan Dubé because of the fact um, former Kelowna Rocket, so we're getting Kelowna in there. We're shouting. Was out he Kelowna. the captain of a World Junior team, or am I getting mixed up? I feel like that sounds right. I'll pull. That yeah, up. right. Like I, I right. swear he was, but I mean, yeah, I, I don't. I'm not going to argue with you on that pick. I just, I don't know from I an just, Islander standpoint. I just obviously got to go defenseman there. I just like that he had a he had a really good year this past year, right? And yeah. 
year. Um, yeah, he selected selected to the uh, World Junior team that won gold in 2018. Yeah, he, he, that's why I was always high on him, and I still am. I'm mean, you know, not to say I'm not. Like, I think he can be. I think he can become like what Mangiapane was this season, uh, like like yeah. that level. Like he he can be that guy. I mean, and that's like I mean that's pretty good. Like he, that's a 45 50 point guy. He's a great two way player. Is that like that probably even more if if he if, if he can work it out. But yeah, he, he had 22 points this past year with the Flames. Yeah. So and, and he had 16 points the year before. So he's probably going to get up to like 30. I'm guessing this year. I, I think yeah, but I think in like if he can like if he work up to it, he can get to like a 45 point pace, like a Mangiapane, something like that. That's yep. that's good, man. That's that's good. That's and what the Flames need. Yeah. yeah, a guy like that, like Mangiapane, is a perfect flame, dude. You yep. know what I mean? <laughs> And, D- and Dylan Dubé at 23 is in line to be like the next Mangiapane. Uh, yeah. So um, I, like, I like that pick at 19. Uh, who are you rounding out the draft with? 20? Yeah. Uh, I guess we kind of skipped over who's 18 originally, but it was Logan Stanley. We already talked about him. 19th was Kiefer Bellows. Uh, that's another guy. Didn't work I, out. I, I still have stock in Kiefer Bellows. <laughs> Kiefer still Bellows have. stock. Uh, he didn't, he doesn't get much chance, which does suck. Um, if, if, um, I mean, if Lou and, uh, and Barry Trotz give him some time. I don't think he'll be bad. He, I think he he'll get some time. He definitely feels like a Josh Hosang yeah. type. He does, but like obviously much less. Whereas Hosang was definitely due to his own issues. Yes. Where yes, this is, um, but I, I was going to say just in terms of like yeah. highly touted player who's not getting yeah the for time. sure. Um, yeah, he's a he's a guy I thought would work out. Um, might be a chance there. Um, nineteenth, I actually. That's who, uh, sorry. Did you, did you take Mete? So 19, you just did 19. Sorry, my brain just fried there, right? 19th, yeah. you just did. So the last pick in this draft, 19th, I had originally had Ryan Lindgren of the New oh, York okay. Rangers because he's just a defensive defenseman who works along, he's works alongside Fox. He had a great season this year. And yeah. I, I think, I, th- I don't think he does much else but improve. Um, 20th, I actually am. I do have Victor Mete. I okay. have, I'm going to go, I'm going to keep him just because I feel like his game would translate better to Detroit. Um, I also, again, this I, is, I also think with Mete is like he needed to get out of Montreal. Like Mete, yeah. I think, is a guy that I think you and I both believe like yeah. a, new, a new place will help him. And not to say he was even bad in Montreal. I always no. found that weird to me. Like uh, he wasn't even bad there. Um, I'll get to the before the, the Dotsu trade, uh, the, the Coyotes originally got that pick from the Rangers. Uh, that pick was in the Anthony Duclair trade. So the, in 2015, a year before this draft, the, the Coyotes acquired John Moore. Um, defenseman, right? He was a good yeah. defenseman in his own right, man. He was also oh, really solid good. Solid defenseman. Solid defenseman in his own right. He played at least yeah 500 games. He was great. Um, he was actually, I think, <laughs> on my own nine list, he was actually like, a, I swear, I forgot what draft it was. I was looking at it, but he was actually on my radar. Never put him in. Um, but yeah, it was John Moore, Anthony Duclair, the Chelowski pick, this pick, and, and the second round pick, Tampa Bay Lightning, 60th, uh, to the Rangers for Chris Summers, Chris Summers, uh, fourth round pick in 2016, who ended up being, I think he's still on the team. I don't know if he, I think he's an RFA, just like, uh, Bellos is, uh, Tarmarian. And then he played a few games last year. Didn't get much. Um, he had a good year in the AHL, so he might get re-signed. Actually, never mind. I did remember. Yeah, he he did get re-signed. He's just in Hartford. He got cut from the from the main team. But that's another guy. And, and they got Keith Yandel. That was a Keith Yandel trade. So that's how originally Arizona got that pick. And then the Dotsuk shit happened after. Um, originally, it was Chalowski that went there. I'm not going to go with him. Victor Mete is the guy. Um, yeah, I just think he's so, he played so well in Ottawa. And like they had like the record alone just shows how good he was. They like with that team. I again, he's a guy that I'm betting on to like. Same, I always do, bet on this to do well. Um, I'm gonna be really disappointed if he doesn't. Do yeah, well because I, I always, I mean, it, it was such a nice story to see a guy get like a hundredth overall, and now he's he has this like. I mean, that's a lot of guys and like brat too. But like, I think I think Mete can work out, especially in Ottawa, man. Like, he's gonna get time in Ottawa. He, he can be a second pairing guy in Ottawa. Um, I don't know, maybe because because they do have Branstrom can play both sides. I don't know if you want Mete Branstrom just because that's more offensive base. Maybe Mete definitely looked better defensively the, over the past few seasons. Um, um, maybe if you look at uh, Mete's points total, you don't really get to see like how he actually is a really good offensive player. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it did take him 120 whatever games to score a goal, but he's well, a good. I was gonna say if you're like 
the, I think when you get into like these later drafts, like obviously like you got like the top guys of like the Matthews and the yeah. Chucks and the Foxes and all that sort of stuff. But if you're patient with these guys, there's yeah. a lot, there's a lot of talent in this draft. If you're patient and you keep, you know, salt, like keep your expectations, not low, but keep mild expectation of what, you know, guys can be like Tyson Jost. He's not going to be a top six scoring winger. So yeah. keep your expectations, you know, mild of like, okay, here's what he can do. This is what he brings. Let's try and maximize that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He, his, uh, his offensive game isn't shown by stats just because it took him so long to score. And I, I, yeah. I think in Ottawa, he can get that chance. Yeah. He, he, he played much better in Ottawa. I mean, not even, I, I just don't never really got the Montreal defense situation. Like Kulak should have been a few more games than Gustafs and obviously it worked and brought him to the finals, but you know, Kulak Romanov are much better defensemen defensively than, than fucking Gus. So I, I'm not even going to go back to that and anymore, man. I had met, I had Mete going 17. Yeah. And I, I, I don't, uh, you had Mete going 17 in the, in the redraft. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I had him 20th uh, and it, it works out in Detroit too. I think cause just cause that left side's really rough. Right. Yeah. And I think you'd probably rather have met Tate install and, and probably the Kaiser. Uh, yeah. I don't know if he's a first line guy in his prime, I, but I think he'd be and, a two two second left defenseman in, in his prime though. Yeah. And I mean, I think there's also a world in which he is like Chalowski too, where Chalowski yeah. like just there's potential with Chalowski being an offensive defenseman and it just, for whatever reason, hasn't worked yeah. out. Yeah. Whereas like Chalowski didn't really work out at all where Mete's kind of become better defensively. Yeah. So he's, he's like improved in a way that it still helps his career, which I think Mete can still have a long career. I, I think he's a good guy. Same with Lindgren. I think Lindgren, like the only reason I didn't take him just because I think uh, Mete fits in with Detroit system better. I think it's a better, I don't know. That's for me. Maybe Lindgren. I don't know. That's Lind- why I went with Lindgren. I had him 21st. He was essentially yeah. like my first guy out. Yeah, but I just went with Lindgren at uh, 19 just because, I don't know. I mean, I saw what he did this season, obviously, as the Rangers guy this year, but yeah. So other notable names, Ryan Lindgren. Uh, I, I did not have Kunin in my top 20. I just Ooh. Had, I had I like Favreau. That's why, because I've seen Favreau play. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's why I like yeah. him. I mean, I like him too. It's not to say I didn't like him, but it, it's a guy who I, I expected more from. Other notable names, uh, Sam Steele who we have to mention because yeah. for a hat trick in person. Yeah. And I've interviewed rough. him. Um, Nathan Bastion for a uh, current, that's a current Seattle Kraken right there. He's been getting some, uh, some preseason action. He, yeah. Uh, he looked- uh, yeah. He looked good on the, the goal he scored uh, in Spokane. Yeah. There's a nice, nice out front pass to, I forgot who it was. I think it was a Riley Sheehan. Sheehan who got the first, yeah. Yeah, the first goal in the preseason history. Uh, Philip Gustafson. I think no, he's like a solid goalie. I think he's fine. He's probably gonna start this year, don't any? Or I like he probably get. I think he does split time with Murray for a bit, and from probably. then on, they'll see. I, I I don't think it's gonna be like not quite a one A one B, but a probably no, no, not if, at all. If, if Murray shits the bed, then it probably will have to be. Yeah, <laughs> apparently uh, Murray's looking good this season. Um, Max Jones. That's another Max guy. Jones is another guy who. There's a couple of ducks. Jones, I had Josh Mahara. I wanted to. Yeah, yeah you want to bring that up too. He's been good too. Uh, Red Deer. What do they call their Red Devils? What the fuck? Red, Red Deer Rebels. Rebels. I like. I saw Re- uh, Mahara when he was playing for Regina at the Memorial Cup in 2018, Ooh. and he was like a really solid, not an overly aggressive defenseman, even though he's yeah. like pretty tall, but. Just a solid player. Just a really yeah. good overall solid player. Yeah, he got he's getting a bit of time recently. I he can Max, move up his way. Max Jones, uh, he's kind of like similar to like the rest of the duck system, forward system, yeah. where it's just like it's like a lesser come to really, if you're really honest. Yeah, you know, that's like, what he's at right now. I think he'd get better, but yeah. There's 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 not really any guys with elite scoring capability. Yeah. They're just good solid yeah right that's that's zegris is really that guy who has to come yeah in it's like a bunch like you know steel max jones troy terry i guess is more of the goal scoring but like even not uh, even to me not like even. he's more a second second line at best third line decent but yeah good comptoir just like all those forwards. there's like, a lot of guys just guys who are like really good overall forwards without scoring yeah who who are gonna make plays but there's not really the goal scoring there that's kind of how i feel like yeah. 
Uh, any um, other any other players that you wanted to a, mention? Have a few. I mean, I'll give Chalowski a shout. I think he could become something. Logan Stanley, we already talked about. Um, there's a few guys here. Completely messed up. Where is Leo his Levy? <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> we don't talk about him. Um, where is he? Uh possible at this point, first line setter, Buffalo Rasmus Asplund. Um, I don't even know who's gonna be in that, but it's probably middle stat, right? But possibly, actually could be a second line center. Uh Yanni Quokinen didn't have a good season in New Jersey, but I think he can he could bounce back. Mm, Libor <sighs> Hayek, worst uh, arguably the worst hockey player this year. Uh, which sucks because I I always <laughs> I thought it would work out that McDonough that McDonough trade actually they end up getting the worst or not that was I don't know if he's the McDonough trade he was in but I think he was in the McDonough trade That's yeah but right. you know to get to get Hayek and Howden who end up like yeah I, first of all I can't believe they got assets for Howden um but you know Hayek never really turned out and he's resigned again um I think Adam Masher and also had a really good year in the AHL last year um I can't see his stats on Hockey Reference but I remember he I- had. He was a possible Seattle Kraken guy just because he has such a good year in the AHL. Hayek was traded to the Rangers along with Vlad Nemesnikov, Brett uh, Howden, and two draft picks for Ryan McDonough and JT Miller. <laughs> Vlad, though, that's actually, I'm pretty sure, like the three worst players he could have probably got to, which is unfortunate, but that's um, DBY, that's DBY for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dylan Gamble, uh, unfortunate where he's in right now just in in san jose uh a few other guys i can go on for a bit uh giovanni smith yeah i don't know if smith I, i'd like to see smith get more yeah time this year with the rain or with the red wings but i don't yeah. speaking of uh, i guess the last guy i'll get to is a guy who was like i thought seattle may have taken was julian gochier okay yeah i i i kind of thought that was the pick with the Rangers too. I think it was just a Blackwell kind of, I mean, Blackwell got time with Panera in the season. So stats looked a bit more inflated, which also did help him like helped him. But yeah, there's, that's a few guys. Um, I was going to say Fabro originally like too, just cause I think he, he can, he just needs to improve. And I think he will. All right. Well, yeah. that's our 24 or 2016 NHL redraft. Uh, we're going to, we'll do season two, maybe at Christmas we'll do season two yeah. of this. And we'll just go through a bunch of more redrafts. You tell us what redraft you want to see. Uh, Rav, any other final thoughts before we head out here? Shout out Oli Levy. Shout out Oli Levy. Uh, future assistant captain, according to Mr. Booth. So, yes. so thank you very much again for listening. Really appreciate it. Uh, you know the drill. Check us out Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content. And uh, we'll be back again soon. Peace out.